Hey, what's up, world? It's your man Carlos Miller, man. Make sure that you head over to 85apparelco.com and grab you some fresh merch, man. Get you a hat, a hoodie, a t-shirt, some socks, a life jacket, um, anything, man. We got all that, all of that, man, from like onesies for the baby. We even got special items for the ladies coming out with my own foot massager. Well, that's what I'm gonna call it anyway. Whatever, that's 85apparelco.com. Go grab you something. And support the movement, man, because the 85 South ain't just about the 85 South. It's about all of us. Where's the motherfucking Khalid? He is, bro. Bro, play me some pimping because they're going to take all this shit down. <laughs> we ain't better use yeah. none of I that. I told them. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you I try to tell upload it. that shit, yeah. like, Bill, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. this yeah. one of yeah. the coldest yeah. niggas. Yeah, that's stuff, yeah. Yeah, we got some, oh, we got some pimping for you, though. Right, know? cool. Produced by my nigga J O N. No cap. Yes, sir. Yeah. We got the wheels in the bill. No cap. Mmm. Mmm. Uh huh. Mmm. Cushion orange juice. Mm. No, this one right here called mm. Higher Than a High School. Mm. Higher Than a High School? Nigga, I'm higher than a high school. Higher than a high school. I'm higher than a high school. Higher than a high school. Yeah. We got the wheels mm. in the bill. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. Get in high. Rolling up, mm. say yeah. what? Sipping, woo, slowing up. Dang, hey. shout it, rad, she pouring up. Look, so I skate to her, I'm rolling up. Come on, yeah. Ooh. I put a three five in that cush, dog. Yeah, I got that pistol in the bush, dog. Yeah, I'm on the block with my partners, and I ain't stuck in the end, cause all of my niggas rob, but so look. Uh. I'm the freshest in the building. Building. I'm with weed, so you know we finna kill it. Kill it. Jay went on the be getting slow, dog. Go ahead, Wiz, and let them know, dog. Um, yeah, it is. I'm the one that's smoking the plane. I'm the one that rolling the plane. I'm the one that got the cush and it got my own name. I'm the one that put on the strings. I'm the one that's riding A. Old school, you know me. Yeah, you know I'm doing my thing. Down here in the ATL, owners know they know the smell. And I got some more to bail. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who is in the bitch? I never had. Uh, Smoking with Khalifa out this turkey bag. I might just make a turkey sandwich. Uh, Them bitches didn't like me last year. Next year they cannot stand me. Uh, Ooh, I'm like a bitch with no legs. I don't wanna talk if she don't smoke and get money and get good heads. Uh -huh. Them my requirements. I'm on some flyer shit. Yeah. And when I get high off of this, I might be higher, bitch. Ooh. We got the whiz in the uh, building, you know it. Uh, I hear this blunt, now I can feel my nails growing. Come on. This shit is crazy. We got the whiz in this bitch, we smoking crazy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fly. Yeah. Um. We getting high. Yes, sir. Hey, if you smoke yeah. the blunt, it ain't even gonna need to try. Uh. Need a turkey bag. Uh. But ain't no turkey in it. It got a bunch of weed. And we gon' puff and give it. Okay, we back again. We got whiz in this beat. We got the J O N. We playing pimpin', Frank. <laughs> back to the 85 South Show. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. No liquor today, all weed. He said he like his bitch with no legs. I said I'm like, like a bitch with no legs. <laughs> I said that they can't stand me first. Oh, like a bitch with no legs. Like a bitch with no I legs. I ain't scared man, the man before. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like what like the fuck that is? Okay, about that. Yeah, yeah, you never fought out. Okay, play no more. Yeah, I said they can't stand me. Like a bitch with no legs. Okay, then. Yeah, sometimes that shit will go over your head. It did. Go over your shape up, nigga. Yes, it did. Yeah. We got a very high guest with us today. Talk your talk, OG. He's very high up on the list. Mm -hmm. Man got higher priorities. Mm -hmm. He don't even, he used to sell weed. Uh -huh. Now he got his own weed. He got his own weed. Man, this man has sold hundreds of millions of records talk at this point. Man, <laughs> one of the biggest songs in song history. Talk your talk. Nigga got so many views on YouTube, they stopped counting. They just put a little sign up yeah. there when you click on the mm -hmm. video. Now mm -hmm. you know this nigga all the way from Pittsburgh. On lane. Pulling up. Black and yellow. Talk your talk. The only nigga in first class. Huh? 
The nigga smoke weed that's named after him. He smokes himself. He smokes himself. Hey, man. One of the coldest niggas to come up out this generation. Ooh, nigga. None other than Mr. Khalifa man himself, Wiz Khalifa. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, man, welcome, welcome to the trap. Thank you. Oh, appreciate you, Thank you all for having me. No cap. Most definitely, man. First of all, how you been? I've been real good, bro. I just been kicking it down here, finishing up this album and shit. Talk Hold up, talk. speaking of kicking it. Yeah. You do some motherfucking kung fu yeah. Muay Thai type shit now, right? Yeah, you be whooping man. ass, man. I, in the gym. I do be in the gym. I fuck with that shit. Man, man you I whooping ass. You on one of them videos looking like Dow scene from Street Fighter. I was like, God, yeah. this nigga Wiz about to yoke up flame. <laughs> like, that's what made you want to get into that? No, like, literally, I just started doing that shit and then I, like, got hooked on it, bro. Like, I, I, I never stopped going back. I went in there one day and never stopped going back. That's crazy. Getting that rich and, and then started all. wanting to get contact. That's no, crazy. for real. I mean, like, it's, it's different. Like, some niggas, they do it just for sport, to look good and shit like that. But I really started learning that shit, you know what I mean? And there's a difference between, like, going, you know, there's levels to it. So, so which one you in? You in Taekwondo or you in, what you doing? I do all that shit. It's mixed martial arts. MMA, is, it stands for uh, mixed martial arts. Right. So I do Taekwondo. Right. I do uh, kickboxing and Muay Thai. Right. Uh, there's wrestling and jujitsu. And then there's normal boxing. Which but, one did you take to fuck around and go of all yeah. the styles? Which one would you say? I'm the best at, at, at Muay Thai. Muay Thai. Muay Thai. What's the difference? And, and Taekwondo. It's elbows and knees. Yeah, Muay Thai is elbows yeah. and knees. Um, yeah, it's like. But if you don't use them properly, you will hurt these motherfuckers. Nah, they these don't hurt. These gonna hurt somebody else. Yeah. No, I'm saying if you don't use them properly, like you'll hurt yourself. That's what you do like at the beginning. You hit them like pause, you hit yourself so much, you don't even feel that shit after a while. Mm, so more so after yeah. a minute, like it's it's basically like the other person feels it more than, than you feel it. Because it's pressure and the impact of how you hit them. A motherfucker be like, oh, that shit don't hurt. Be like, yeah. let a nigga bow you. No, yeah. that's even like shit. even like the heavy bag, like when you more first go in there. And you hitting that shit, it's gonna hurt. Like your your shins are gonna be red. Right. Your you know what I mean. Your elbows gonna be red. They gonna you gonna peel some skin off and all of that. Right. But after a while, you don't even feel that shit. I'm gonna hit. Yeah, that's yeah. That's when my come out and hit you one of these. Yeah, they they was on your yeah. ass about your feet though. I yeah, saw you yeah, get back in the yeah. cup. <laughs> <laughs> like hold on, goddamn it, y'all taking this shit too Man, far, bro. They they be girl. I wasn't even paying attention to that shit either. I'm in the studio. And I'm trying to show them like me working on a stu or something in the studio, and they zoomed in on my foot, and I was like, "Oh yeah, they're right." <laughs> yeah, that shit was yeah, yeah they, for sure. yeah, they right. And I don't let me ask you this, like, cause it's I don't know if this is a perception that you got, but they, you know, it's people make it seem like Wiz can't take a joke. Where do you think that come from? Um, it comes from me defending myself on the internet, right? Like, they they used to celebrities like not saying shit. They're like, oh, you you don't got time for that, or you shouldn't stoop down to people's level. But the thing about the internet these days is the perception is way stronger than it was back in the day. So if you allow people to say things, then that's what people are gonna think. And I got fans, you know what I mean. My fans they love me, so I, if. They're not gonna be the ones that they can't get on the internet every day and say, nah, Wiz is this, Wiz is that. I'm gonna defend myself and I'm gonna say something so they could be like, yeah, exactly. While y'all talking shit on my man, he's coming back saying something, you know what I mean, in return. At least that, like, it deserves that because there's no balance. Like, if a nigga be like, yo, Wiz fell off, blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing, then people will start believing it. But if I'm on the internet every day with music, videos, I'm in your face, I'm still cracking jokes no matter how people talk shit. If I want to respond to somebody who I don't necessarily agree with them talking shit, like right. certain people, it's cool, you know what I mean? I don't mind, I really don't mind if I'm able to like defend myself and go back, you know what I mean? But if it's like one-sided, then you're gonna get a certain reaction. It just is what it is, like right. that's how it is in the world. But literally, I just feel like it should be even. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think I don't think any artist should be held back from expressing how they feel. Like even if they are frustrated at sometimes, because a good artist takes that frustration and they make it, you know what I'm saying, into something. Right. So while I'm letting you know that I'm frustrated, 
believe that I'm going to spin it into something. And, I'm, and you're going to keep seeing me as well. So, like, I don't really let that shit get to me. I don't let it bother me. Because anybody who knows me personally knows that I can take a joke. I got a great sense of humor. It's just, who's joking? You know what I mean? That's, that's really what it boils down yeah. to. That's what it really boils down to. Like, who's joking? Like, you know what I mean? Right. But, like, it's all good. Like, I do, I do it for my fans. And I do it for, like, people who... You know, could, who could get the perception fucked up by me being quiet? Like this, it's not a quiet time. It's a loud time. Like right. if niggas gonna be loud about that. I'm gonna be loud about my side as well, and we'll just be even. Got you. Yeah, yeah. Pop your shit, nigga. You ain't doing nothing wrong. No, nah, hell no. Nah. I mean, hopefully more more artists get inspired to like just go off the cuff and just say how they feel. Like regardless of what people feel about it, regardless of what the criticism is gonna be. Cause you still gonna see me, like. You paint the narrative. Paint the narrative. Yeah, hell yeah. Why would I let Why would I let some trolls tell the story for me, like? You know what I mean? But isn't that dangerous for artists who haven't had the level of success that you had because you say the wrong thing on the internet? Now it's over with. So you know I think, what I mean? I think for artists with more success, it's more dangerous yeah. because you have more of a legacy to protect, or you have more expectations, like for yourself, more to lose. like more people. Not really more to lose, because. I think any the real a, a smart artist knows what to you know put their neck how far to put their neck out there. Pause. Like you don't want to give too too many, too much ammo. You know what I mean? So like when when you're doing that shit, you know what you, what's gonna come with it. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I said pause. Yeah. No. Because you caught it right at the right time. Yeah. Those niggas was about to be like, whoa, Wiz. Yeah, nah, 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 I'm cool. Wow. <laughs> I'm cool. I already know. I already know, bro. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I nah, already know. You're right, though. I mean, but like a real artist knows what, what what's going to happen after they say those things or whatever. If you're ready for it and you're ready to, you know what I mean, keep defending yourself, it's like, I think a lot of people just got it twisted to where you have to be this calm version of yourself to be successful and that doesn't really get shit done like you have to be proud you have to be loud you have to take risks you have to do things that are uncomfortable so you know the more successful that you are the more people is going to be in your comments telling you what you should and shouldn't do and that kind of can fuck with your belief in yourself it can fuck with your confidence in yourself but you have to just stand up every day and be like look y'all motherfuckers follow me so if I'm frustrated today, and if you ruin my day, and I figure I want to ruin your day too, like, it is what it is, nigga. Like, you shouldn't be poking me. And just listen to the music and enjoy it and pick a side. Pick what side you want to be on. You want to be cool with a nigga, or you want to troll a nigga. And this is what happens to trolls, and this is what happens to niggas who are cool with me. Right. And that, every artist deserves that, right. in my opinion. He coming from a space too, because, you know, like, you never seen him interact like that you see what i'm saying like so when you do be calm and you be chilling and then you allow the people to paint the narrative just like you say said, whatever people just be start believing you be like yeah. Oh, yeah. let me let me let me hey, first of all you start becoming a nigga that out. niggas could play with right and it's not it's not that it's not because i'm cool and i smile and i dress how i want to that you're just gonna play with me no hell no it's never been like that right. and i'm not the dude who's gonna get tough or like show you why you ain't gotta play with me because that's already been done it's just, no, I'm going to let you know how to treat me. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been telling y'all that. You must have forgot. It's been 10 years. It's cool. I'll remind you. You're a mogul. Yeah, Social sure. media has lost. I didn't get here by being quiet, bro. I didn't get here by being quiet. I didn't. Like, media it's never been my thing. Respect. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. A lot of them niggas, when you check them, they be like, oh, big bro, you know. And they be nine need, years old, too. Yeah. No, nah, they, they, they be grown-ass men who need to get checked. Yeah. And when you do it, they want to call you big bro, and they want to say less work and all I of that. I've been fucking with yeah. you. Yeah, so that's, a fan. that's all I need you to you, do, bro. You find out that's that all I need you to do. shit from a computer that you still got to get off the telephone to use, and you be mad at yourself, like, at least me, when I've had experiences where, you know, I done caught people that done said wild shit, and it's be like, man, I was really sitting in my house mad at a nigga yeah. who's sitting in somebody else's house hoping not to get put out. Yeah, but the internet is powerful. It's fucked so up. if somebody, sees, on if somebody <laughs> sees somebody getting a reaction <laughs> from what they say about you, then they'll copy that. And then now you got a bunch of niggas talking about you yeah. just because somebody else got yeah, popular. I mean, I be famous and, come, I'm and that's not cool, bro. Like, that's, that's lame as hell. <laughs> They see somebody else got got 30,000 clicks or 300,000 clicks by mentioning what you got on or what you're doing. 
So they wouldn't even they wouldn't even necessarily do it. It's just a trend. They're like, oh, I want to be as popular as this person. So let me talk about this nigga too. Like, come on, man. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I'm yeah, gonna block that up. I, I, I love blocking. Yeah. I love blocking. I'm like, you know what? I'd rather delete everybody out of my life who don't fuck with me. I block hella niggas. Everybody fuck me. So and I when I block them, guess what they do? They DM me from another account and be like, why'd you block me, big bro? And I'd be like, enjoy being blocked. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah, you don't even say nothing paid. negative on my shit. I'm I'll block you if you just say some shit I don't like. Yes. Like, if I just disagree, I'd block you. <laughs> Not for sure. I'm with that too. I want to hit this shit. I'm with that because you're, you're in control of, so you're controlling your page. So it's like, why would you want to go on your page and see shit that you don't want to see? Right. right. Block a nigga. I don't know why people follow him. He ain't that funny. Well, since you up on the hill, block uh, your bitch ass. Yeah. You ain't never got to see me again. Bro, yeah. that fucks their day up so yeah. bad, bro. They that be hurt. so good. It they, does. They, they start making it excuses. Does, Damn, you, you got money. What you worry about little old me for? I'm not. You're blocked. Oh, yeah. I, I always click on their page before I, I block me, because then I can I can compare what they said to how they living, and I'd be like, I can't do it. Oh, yeah. it makes sense. I can tell. I did that. Cabin, I did that two times. I they never on have page. good pictures. I went in on them. I went in on them, and I said, damn, I just went. I you ever you notice if you go to like you they be looking like they be orange and shit. They fucking they pictures look like grass behind them and shit. They pictures be like from twenty ten. It was it was a dude that was so ugly had. <laughs> he ain't had real glass. He had goggles. And I'm like, nigga, you don't even know who you even looking at anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm somebody else. Blah! <laughs> Stupid ass. What the fuck? Yeah, man. Get here. the motherfuckers out of there, man. They don't need no promotion. You got to stay positive, man. You've been doing, you've been doing great thus far any fucking way. Yeah, I think it's cool. We're just in a different age where the internet is hella powerful, bro. It's weird. It's, it's, it, it is weird, but it's cool. Like, you know what I mean? We're in control of this shit. It's marketing. Yeah. Once the, the real people that understand that it's marketing, you understand. But yeah. the other people that's, that make it seem like it's their lifestyle, those are the ones you be like, ah, ah. But it is a you, lifestyle, you, though. You know what I mean? I mean, for certain people, like I say, man, the Etch Sketch was an iPad. We just living in the time now where the internet is the new currency. The attention that you get from the internet, the followers, people care more about a following than they do about really having a following. As long as I look at my phone and see millions of people, it don't matter that I go outside and don't nobody come up and say nothing to me. Because when I look at my phone, it's my reality. And we moving towards that. It's going to get to a point where you ain't even got to go outside no more. No, you can still sit down and stay tell them nigga that ain't shit. In real life. Because if the internet and all that shit was delete, you going to collapse. Yeah, of course. But, what was you that know. show you said you was going to do? Oh, the show I was going to say? Uh, uh, what was the name of it? Say that shit say now. Say that shit now. <laughs> can, can everybody who say something in the, in the comment find out where they be at, where they work at, and be like, hey, this you? Say that shit. Say that shit now. <laughs> say that shit now. Man, say that shit now. Out of us, man. I'm like, excuse me, can you get little Timmy? Yeah, it's hard. He's not. I'm going to bring your little bitch ass downstairs. That's yeah. hard. He said some grown man shit online. Yeah. Say that shit say now. Say that shit now. Yeah. Just say it. Definitely are going to sue you. You are getting what? sued, man. Without question, you do that. <laughs> say that, that shit is now. about to face that. We have to hire a whole geek squad to trace yeah. him down. Like Neve and them did with uh, what was that uh? Talking about catfish. Catfish, yeah. That yeah. shit ain't hard. That was wrong with these niggas. Your IP address, anybody can find that. <laughs> <laughs> you did this shit before. Nigga, that nigga Fly got the listen, computer set up like Batman. On episode three, nigga. Oh, yeah, I heard nigga. what you said, motherfucker. Listen, he bullshit. I'm on episode three. That's what three. I was about to say. We need to just start filming and fuck the network. That's what we do. I'm on episode three already. Pulling up on niggas, bro. I'm on ten people. I don't pull up on <laughs> you know, ten I, people. I ain't gonna turn around and look at you in that auto zone if you pull up on him and shit. Listen, I'm I'm in I'm in whole disguise and everything. They don't even know it me. That's fine. Say that shit now, man. That's fine. That's it. That's fine. If you go up on the disguise and ask a nigga about you, hey, and he get to talking shit, yeah, fuck that. One nigga of them, one of them was a nun. Stop playing. On everything I love. She on there trolling, folks. Yeah, on there trolling. Pulled up on her with the outfit. Hey, say that shit now. Let your sisters know what you be doing. Sisters, come, come on. <laughs> say that shit now. This nigga that pulled up. You on, evil, man. You evil. <laughs> oh, Mother Mary. Man, man you this evil. <laughs> you evil. Sister Esther, you, you, go, you, going, you going down. <laughs> Boop. 
Wiz, man, you just like you said, you've been doing this shit for over a decade, man. But I don't know if a lot of people know the, the backstory. Like we were just talking earlier, you said, man, you used to be the weed man in school. <laughs> yeah, yep. So, like, did you always know that that was gonna be your persona? Like that that was gonna be what you led with when you became an artist? Um, it's crazy because I just stood on like smoking weed everywhere I went. Like, even in the early days before that shit was like accepted, I had, it was like I had to smoke weed everywhere. If I was in the club, if I was in the studio, if I was in the car, it was like a well-known thing. This little nigga is gonna smoke weed. And so it wasn't never, you know, I never knew that was gonna be the thing that caught on, but I, it was definitely one of the most things that I stood on ever. But I don't think it was until I met Currency that we were able to put it together and make it like this new world. Mm -hmm. Because at first, there was him who smoked a lot of weed and rapped about it, like kinda in his music. And then there was me who like smoked a ton of weed and rapped about it, like kinda in my music. I might've had like two weed songs. I like mentioned it in the verses and shit like that, but I wasn't, I, you couldn't call me a weed rapper. Like, you know what I mean? From Pittsburgh. And, and we all burn like real heavy in Pittsburgh. We smoke hella weed. But it was when me and Currency got together and, you know, I'm buying ounces, he's buying ounces, and we made a whole mixtape, a whole sound, like all of our bars was basically about what we was doing every day. And it just kind of turned into like this whole weed lifestyle. Like, I don't know what it was about when we started doing, you know, our music together. Uh, it was How Fly was the first mixtape mm -hmm. that we did together. And it probably had to do a lot with social media too, like at the time, because we were like making videos and, just putting all our slang on the internet and just, you know what I mean, involving all of the fans. Like it just, a lot of it <clears throat> was like fan interaction too. And we would go different cities and shit like that, link up with niggas and talk about packs and shit like that. So it just became like, you know what I mean, the thing. And, and it wasn't really on purpose. It was really, really super organic and it was just based off of the shit that we was doing every day. And so after that kind of took off and Literally concerts were starting to be like formed around that shit where niggas was just coming from everywhere to smoke weed and hear us jam out That's when we knew like oh, okay. This is this, this, yeah, this is the fucking thing like you know what I mean like because Niggas ain't smoking for everybody else's set like you know what I mean? They're they're chilling like you know what I mean like We go to their set the, it's the clouds. They're not existing as soon as we get on stage you Can't fucking see nobody. It's just fucking puffs in the air. So we're like, oh, okay We're the weed rappers like you know what I mean? We figured it out. That's crazy. Yeah <laughs> when, did you, when did you realize like oh shit? It's happening. My life is about to change. Um When I went to jail Okay, yeah, I got locked up in North Carolina and I thought we were gonna be in jail for a minute like they had brought us the like clothes for the week, toothbrush, like oh, yeah, so you they were like get comfortable. Like, like, y'all in? Yeah, yep. You changed that, my boy. Yeah, yep. And um, that's when it feel like jail. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. when you ain't got your clothes yeah. on no more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Them African slides. Yeah, they gave you them African slides. You like, I know the slides they gave you. Them yeah. leather African slides. You like, oh, I'm in here. They was like, you want us now? And I was like, man, I was like, I was thinking like my only fucking. The solution was to call somebody rich that I knew at the time. Like, I was like, we gotta call like Snoop or somebody to bail us out or whatever. But we ended up having like a lot of money under the bus for, for me to be able to bail out and bail all my niggas out and do the show the next day. So at that point, I was like, oh, we're really on. Like, you know what I mean? These niggas can't fuck with us. Like, I, I'm able to do what I gotta do with, you know what I mean, my content, and I got money too. Like, you know what I mean? So I was like, I'm good. I know how to I know how to make whatever song when they put me in the building with whatever producer like that's done. I, I got the fan base and I got bread. Like I was like we good. But when did you realize it? He said when did you realize your life was about to change? When did you realize you had hit that next plateau that like you had stepped it up from where you were then? Like what was that moment for you? I mean that was really it, bro. Because like I had made the news. Like niggas was calling me. Niggas was trying to link with me. Niggas was trying to do everything. So I knew like. This is, yeah, this is this is it. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, this is this is my time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything was coming together. Like, at that point, Atlantic was talking about signing me, but I was 
I mean, I was already getting money independent, so I was like, I wasn't in no rush to really do. I was doing everything on my time, right. and I was self sufficient, and I had a lot of money, so I was like, yeah, I'm good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, bro, I see man. why you love this shit right here. <laughs> I've been trying to say something for about ten minutes. I told you. But I was just like, I don't even want to say shit. Bro. I told you, my nigga. That's why I know better. <laughs> I done hit about three, four times. I done weed. smoked the whole I told joint. You be good. Nigga, that's it. He. He knew it when he got locked up. Yeah, because when you get locked up and thought you was great ass up to call somebody, and a nigga call you and tell you you got 50,000 under the bus. Hold up, what made you What made you think you was going to be there for a long time, though? Because I wasn't, um, I don't really like, when I'm doing shit, when I'm working, I'm not paying it. Not, not that I'm not paying attention, but I'm not counting everything. I'm not doing it. I'm just hustling. Right. So I have been hustling for so long, I wasn't, really looking at that. I was just worried about my fans. I was worried about what city. I was worried about what J's I had on. I was worried about which hoodie I was going to wear. Like, I wasn't worried about that shit. Uh, so, like, when I got locked up, that's the moment that I realized, like, where I was actually at in the game. I was like, nigga, I, we had a half a million under the bus in cash from merch. I said yeah. 50,000. Yeah. I was way, yeah. way... Under the cash. God, 50, 500, 500 million cash. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the hell you was in there, thought you was going to be in there yeah. for a long nah, time. No, they took this much weed, and then they gave us three felonies, and my bail was $3 million. For this? Yeah, they was trying to do us dirty, bro. They did us hella dirty. They locked 10 niggas up and gave us all $300,000 bail. So that's $3 million. I'm not leaving nobody in jail, and I bailed everybody out. I was like Sugar Ray on motherfucking uh, on Harlem Nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that nigga yeah. showed up. Yeah. Shut it. Hey, <laughs> Did you see uh, Harlem Nights? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bunch of niggas riding off into the sunset. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. I bailed all my that, niggas out. That's what I'm trying to show you. Sound like you showed up like Malcolm X at the gym. When they had my young ass. They thought they had you, my young ass, bro. Damn. I did oh, that. Oh, and then I recorded Taylor Gang, the song Taylor. Yeah, I recorded yeah, that on Taylor. the bus the night afterwards. Hell nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was a, you knew you was yeah. the leader of the gang? That's after what that. I'm saying, nigga. You walking out of jail with a line of niggas? Like, <laughs> you are the leader, sir. Same time? You are the leader of us. <laughs> and then I don't make yeah. switch it. <laughs> Some of the most beautiful shit I ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you, that had to be a crazy feeling. Sugar, you you, you imagine hearing nigga your bell three million, and you don't know y'all, boy, and you sitting in there, and you the nigga that's just with the nigga. You like, oh, oh, I got to do, oh. Then a the nigga show up, and you like, yeah, you been bailed out, and then it's you standing there like this nigga Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How'd you pull it off, Slim? Mm -hmm. Ain't no way in the world. That's crazy. It ain't gonna hit you till after the show that next night. He said they perform the next yeah, night. Yeah. After, after that, you be like, nigga, laugh. About to fall. Fall out. Right around this motherfucker. Out of them ten, which one was about to fall, man? Don't you do it. Ain't, no, ain't, no, ain't nobody, ain't nobody fall. But I'll say my producer Jerm. I felt the I felt the worst for him because oh. he was the one who wasn't like cut like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, not even cut like that, but he that's not. Just, not yeah, yeah, that's not. Yeah, 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 that wasn't for him. Yeah. Yeah. He was just there, yeah. dog. Yeah. He looked at me. It was like, bro. He was like, bro. What the fuck, man? Like, uh, yeah. He was you know, like, like man. He was like, he was like, y'all could do this, bro. I can't do this, man. I'm like, you ain't gonna have to do this, nigga. I'm getting everybody the fuck out of here, nigga. That we ain't standing in here, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> they gonna think you up or something. Yeah, he probably was like, you guys have 36 my, hours. My, my whole side had do. to count that money with his hands, bro. He had to count 100 large with his hands, bro. <laughs> My uncle. For real? Yeah, yup. He had to count that shit with his fucking hands, bro. That's real G. Right, bro. Yeah, yup. <laughs> Go to the butt. What butt? Damn <laughs> you, slow down. What, what, what are you My talking about? My aunt went down in a hundred bands with his hands. Yeah, bro. I know that. Down in a hundred bands like nephew that made something of himself. <laughs> God. How much you say he need? <laughs> well, he ain't gonna miss that. <laughs> <laughs> Only goddamn count not and did. <laughs> You know it put tax on that shit, don't yeah, you? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, that man. Nice. So when when did you like, you know, you like you said you got one of the biggest songs in song history, mm -hmm. literally. So, like, what was the first one that you said that your first hit in your mind? People always look at the real first hit numbers wise, but yeah. what was your first hit to you? Yeah, to me, black and yellow. 
Uh, that was my first hit. Um, it was intentional because, like I said at that time, I was like really feeling myself just off of everything that I was doing. So everything that I did, I knew what I was doing. So when I walked in a session with Atlantic, they could ask me to do this, this, or whatever. I was working with the producers. I was working with uh, Stargate at the time, and they're really dope producers, and they they're good at pop records. They had never done a hip hop record before. So my whole approach was just to not change what I was already doing on the mixtape side, but to show them that I'm able to cross over. So when I did it, my initial thought was like Snoop, you know what I mean? When he first came out, when he was riding on the bike with the fro out and he stood on top of the, uh, uh, the liquor store and shit, I'm like, I have to make a song that's my Snoop moment. And I was like, I gotta rep my city. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna rap how the fuck I wanna rap. And what I did. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. That's right, Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, C. Ellis, and Levitra, but in a chewable tablet and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of the licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, once you're approved, once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part is all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use promo code 85SOUTH at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code 85SOUTH to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we'd like to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you still can have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you could contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robin Hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match, all right? Robin Hood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to the IRA with the 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get CC at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as a Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitation applies to IRAs and 401k. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC. Member SIPC is a registered broker. Did learn in that session was how to put, you know, how to structure a really good radio record, mm. and um, you know, because I kind of just rapped through the song, and Stargate broke it down, and they were like, "This is the hook part. Are we gonna double this? Blah blah blah. This that and the other thing." So after we did that, I'm like, "Yeah, this is the song. Like, you know, I, I really want to run with this." And um, Atlantic gave me like the whole summer to record some more music, but really, I just used it to just like kind of set up my album. Like, I was record songs that I would finish later for the album, but I already knew I wanted to go with Black and Yellow. So by the time it was time to, uh, you know, sign the deal and then drop the first uh, single, I knew Black and Yellow was it. I shot the video, I directed the video, I wrote the treatment for the video. It's in Pittsburgh, it starts out like, like how Snoop shit is, like with him in the house. And then it has the scene with me on top of the Dairy Mart, which is our uh, store in our hood. But it's like, it's basically the same thing. I'm like, let niggas know, like, all right, I'm here. So that happened, and then the fucking Steelers went to the Super Bowl that year. So like, just with all of this theme that I already had, you know, on the mixtape side, you know, that shit just made it go like on a mainstream level. Like every time a nigga's scoring a touchdown, they playing my fucking song. So that shit helped out so much, and it was like, uh, I don't honestly, I don't even know why it caught on so well at radio. Like, because it's just a regional song. It's like, it's about Pittsburgh and it's two colors that don't nobody even give a fuck about. But they do now. They yeah, do now. they do now. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. like, yellow, yellow. bro, you can go to Dubai and they ain't singing yeah. that shit for no reason. Like, you know what I'm saying? But That's like, it did. They think you one of them. Your name, Wiz Khalifa. Yeah. It did really, it did really, really well. Come, come. Black yellow. Yes. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> it did great at yes. radio. <laughs> Like, niggas was rapping, the Lil Wayne rapped over the instrumental, like, the fucking Lakers remixed it for Purp and Yellow. 
So that was a big fucking song. Like I was like, uh, yeah, we out of here. I was like, oh, yeah. So, yeah. So that was that was that's that to me that's the signature moment from ground to finish, and it went number one. So went like, one. boom, like yeah. You can see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. show. Yeah. That's the that's the major one. Man, you got to put two more colors together. I got. I got a shit. shit. I want red and black. Red and black. <laughs> Maybe we'll go to the Super Bowl and win. Nah. We just signed Kirk Cudd for 180 goddamn million dollars. Yeah, yeah, nah, it's over with. I can't believe that. It's over with. Yeah, I hate, to, I hate to be the bad, bad. Yeah, that's hate one of the bad, bad news. I'm calling this going up. Man, <laughs> should have never died. Yeah, no, nah, for real. He Damn. don't sign a, nobody a, black no more. That's an anthem right there. Like, so when you saw the Pittsburgh, were you a Pittsburgh Steelers fan? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, how did that feel to have your team, yeah. your home team, yeah. like, had a the reason why they went they the theme Bowl, song be your song? Yeah, it was like, cool. How crazy was that? It's cool. And, and, and for, for real, for real, it's just more about the hometown. Like, anybody from Pittsburgh got real, real hometown pride. So just them colors, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just being from the Berg, like, no real rapper being able to represent Pittsburgh on that level, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> the Steelers is cool, and we love the Steelers, but we always had the Steelers, like, you know what I mean? So it's like, as a kid, Don't they got uh, the Penguins, teams. and we got the Pirates. They fuck yeah, with that, the two, yeah. yeah. All the teams yeah. black, and black and yellow. Yeah. Everything but it's like, as a kid, you're not, like, sitting there like, man, I wish that they would play my song in the stadium, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But it's more like, being on that level of the Steelers and being from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Like the same people who watch the Steelers look at my music the same way. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that shit was that shit was cool. You could have made a song about Polanski brothers, bro. Or so, any anything, yeah, bro. You know what I mean? Any, you anything. Being the person that come from your city that was the first rapper, that's a lot of pressure. Like speak to that. Like you really the first person yeah. to go nationwide. Yeah. And I think that my personal opinion is most cities in America where you don't know their history is because, well, at least us, black people, is because they didn't have a, a rapper go nationwide to yeah. narrate their stories. So yeah. you the person that did that for Pittsburgh. Yeah, for sure. It's still difficult because I love my city and it's, it's so, so much variety there. I only represent, you know, one thing that can come from Pittsburgh. There's so much other shit going on and we enjoy so much other music and, and parts of of just the the whole experience of being there. But it's like making an identity and having that be the Pittsburgh sound, I still feel like it hasn't even really happened because I'm I don't even I define what people know about Pittsburgh like on a mainstream level, but there's so much more to Pittsburgh that hasn't. Let me ask you this, were there any like underground artists that you came up listening to, like locally from your area? Yeah, hell yeah, there's a lot of artists. Just people that I came up with, like we were all in the studio together. There was the government, there was uh, Heavy Hustle, like there, a lot of them still that I, that I still do records with. And there's a lot of younger niggas like Wapo, he he, he passed. Yeah, Hardo. Uh, yeah, Hardo, Hardo's hard as hell, yeah, he's he crazy. Is, that nigga dope. Uh, Teth, he passed. There's a lot of other niggas, and there's niggas who's still alive who's doing their thing too. But it's like, there's just a lot of different sounds. And it has to do with not necessarily getting out of Pittsburgh and doing shit, but applying that same shit other places. Yeah. And I was one who wasn't scared to like go everywhere, like go to Toronto, go to New Orleans, go to Atlanta, yeah. go to LA, go to New York. And that's why more people are, are and Mac Miller too, you know what I'm saying? I, we can't forget about it. We can't forget about Mac. And he was able to do something totally different for Pittsburgh that, you know what I'm saying? But on the same level as well and be legendary. So it's, um, it, he came on wild and now and turned that yeah, bitch yeah, out. Yeah, Mac is hard, bro. And he's like a great representation of what Pittsburgh is, too. Even being a white artist, even, you know, talking about the things that he talks about, what he talks about is real Pittsburgh shit as well. Like, you know what I mean? So I feel like the next big artists or producers or writers who come out of the Berg are just going to continue to elevate it and just peel back the layers of what we what we actually are. I'm just the first one. All the way. What was yeah. the first city that embraced you outside of your city? What would you say was the first city that you went to where you was like, I, I, I'm i locked in here? Damn. Um, Chico went to school for this shit. He, he, he know. What fact? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure I give the right people the right credit. Because there's like a, there's like a hood level and then there's a college level too. 
Cause like on a college level, it's more like like Indianapolis and like Kentucky and like shit like that. But on a hood level, it's like Detroit, Chicago, uh, DMV area, the Bay Area, like shit like that. Mm. Where, if you had that show where you like a place you never thought you would fucking be doing a show at? Um, let me think. I think like more than foreign countries where they yeah, don't speak I mean. English and shit like yeah. that. Or they speak no English at all. And like Korea, like that one tripped me the fuck out. Being in, <laughs> yeah, being in Korea is wild, bro. <laughs> Cause they speak zero English, so they're not even trying to speak English over there. So it's like you gotta do an hour set of like I'm saying nigga and all that shit. Like they are they too. Doing? Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. They are too. They don't even know nigga. <laughs> That's a button. Black and yellow nigga. Black and yellow nigga. I'm getting that shit out of my head. Watch this shit. You remember? They know that shit and they know uh, Young Wild and Free. They sing, oh, yeah. they sing, oh, they sing that they shit at karaoke yeah. and fuck it all up. So to get done. So to be free. So to be free. Living by the end. They fucking it all up. They fucking all the words up. You know they fucking it up. They say, so to be moon eyes. So to be free. Oh, yo, man. So my nose. Ping ping, they fucking it all up. They add shit. Black and yellow nigga. Black and yellow nigga. Yeah. Black bitch. Take a picture. Hell yeah, man. Man, I got an ass. You know weed over there. Juicy J, man. Like Juicy's already was a legend. Like, what made you tap in with Juicy J? Or did he tap in with you? Now I see, uh, so I think it was like both ways, but definitely for sure, like just on my way up, I always like acknowledge the niggas who I fucked with heavy. Like if I played your music in my car, like, you know what I mean? Like I would hit you up on Twitter and be like, what's up nigga? Like, you know what I mean? So I listened to Hella 3-6 Mafia growing up and Juicy was just starting to uh, do his thing again. Like on the internet, I seen he was making videos on Worldstar and all of that shit. And uh, he he had just did the mixtape with Lex Luger, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it was before Blue Dream and Lee, but um, he had d just done that mixtape. And uh, I was on the road and I hit that nigga up. I'm like, yo, we fuck with your music heavy, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, shit, I'm finna come uh, fuck with y'all niggas on tour, man. And just like <laughs> lived on the tour bus, <laughs> lived on the tour bus for like a week and a half and we made music and he just chilled with us. And he kind of just seen our vibe and was like, y'all cool as hell. Like we listen to old school music and smoke weed and you know what I mean, get fucked up and party. He was like, man, y'all like the young version of us, bro. Like. So he kind of just, we just became friends, just chilling on the road. And then um, by the end of that tour, he lived out in LA already. And then that's when I said, I, moved, uh, I went out there and I met Snoop and I moved out to LA. So instantly when I lived out in LA, Snoop was my dog and Juicy was my homie. So we just instantly started making music. I was already finishing up Cabin Fever uh, right before I moved out there. So he was like, a real important part of, you know, finishing up Cabin Fever and even being a part of that sound. Cause niggas was hella excited that we were doing music together. And him and Lex Luger were already working together. So that mixtape was like, no yeah, it just all, it just all made fucking sense. Like, you know what I mean? So when we did that, that shit happened. And then he was out in LA, like working real hard. He was with uh, Dr. Luke. He was doing shit with Kesha, he was doing shit with Katy Perry, but it all had him like tied together and come together. So by the time I moved out there and we was all fucking with each other, that's when the Miley song happened and that's when like everything just started to become more like, you know, a mainstream thing. And people were seeing us like, okay, Wiz and Juicy, like, you know what I mean? And then that's when, you know, he had his like re kind of like a rebirth. Way, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he made bands to make her dance, yeah. nigga, and then it was fucking over, nigga. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Hell yeah, it was a rap after that. Is there artists that you want to work with? Like, like the song you fucking list. I got that. I got to see it. Yeah, it's more. It's more like producers now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wanna. I wanna get in with um with Swiss Beats. 
and, and Timberland. Like, I, oh, I really yeah. want to work with them. Yo. Yeah, yeah. That'd be cold. Build some shit. I hit up Tim already. I, I told you I'd be DMing niggas, bro. Yeah. Nigga, yeah, yeah. if I want, hey, fool, exactly. If I want to, if I want to work, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you up. You ain't gonna hear from nobody else but me. Which I got. You got, you got, you got to turn me down. I gotta ask, <laughs> cause I, I love the production too. Like that's one of my favorite parts of hip hop. What's your favorite Swiss beat and what's your favorite Timberland beat? Ooh, you want um. Bible? <laughs> My favorite it. Swiss beat is probably uh, Who the fuck y'all want? Jada Kiss. Okay. Who the fuck y'all? Oh, yeah. nigga. Yeah. That beat yeah. is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you said Timberland. Um, I think it would have to be. Damn, Tim got so many, bro. I got he I got he you, got man. hella he got hella airs. Swiss got hella airs too. Yeah, though. I tell you my favorite Timberland beat is that your bitch. <laughs> Nigga, that's what I was gonna say. Hey, I was gonna I, say I, that. Is that that beat too. That beat great. is crazy. <laughs> but then I started thinking about all the Aaliyah beats. I was gonna say yeah. the Aaliyah with that. And then I started thinking about the genuine beats. Oh yeah, Missy. Yeah. Uh, and then like you know what I mean. Uh, he said. Uh, he got too many. God damn it. <laughs> 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 he got too many. Yeah. 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 Because don't none of them bitches sound the same. I know, that's what, but just that, I remember like. Because think I all the hits Missy got shit. that he did. Yeah, I know. Genuine, like you said, genuine. Why you do that? Shit, Justin Timberlake. He made that. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. All in my grill. Yeah. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. yeah. 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 My favorite Swiss beat I had to say is uh dun, 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 down bop. Oh, you like all the fast joints. You a fast yeah. rapper. No, I mean I yeah, I like, yeah. like Twist one of my favorite rappers, Twist but I just too. I just like the, you know, I remember hearing these songs for the first time and that yep. sound being something you never heard before. Yeah. Yep. Like, bring them out, bring them out, bring yeah, them yeah. out, bring them out. It's hard, hard to, to yell when the bell rails in your mouth. It's it don't do, do, bring them out, bring them out. That's yeah. it. See, I'll be liking the old Swiss beats like. You heard Cassidy aim for the head. Oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah. That shit yeah. was crazy. Yeah, man. hell That's yeah. That's real production. Then you got all the shit he did for X on that first, on them Come first on, man. albums, my nigga. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Cassidy. I just love when a nigga bring his whole crew. It's just another big man. That shit, man. But I got you a whole through, man. Man, what? Come on, man. He ain't got that production no more, though. It's a whole I think bunch so, of man. It's a young nigga. It's a. Ping, ping. No, it's a young nigga. <laughs> <laughs> it's a young nigga coming out of New York. That that's they, they my little, they do that little thing on that's my head. favorite producer right now coming out of New York. Young nigga named Cash Cobain. Right. Like oh, yeah, this, okay. Cat, man, this nigga beats. Oh. It, he, yeah, he do a lot of sampling of the uh, old mm -hmm. R&B song. Okay. So it give you that nostalgia of them beats that you like. Right. And then he flipped the shit and make it cold, man. Yeah. Like slim, that's like cause one of my favorite beats is Nelly Dilemma. That's one of the coldest beats ever. Right, right. Like, and he took that and flipped it into some shit. That shit so jamming, man. So it is some young niggas. That's yeah, I think it's definitely the underground. Like that's the that's like got the the, they best, always the best had sound. the best beats. Yeah, like I think like the the yeah, production yeah. now is like really polished and it's moved away from like. Darker shit. Fruity loops yeah, and shit you know like what I mean? Yeah. Like, like the beats that you were talking about, like those stand out. Like when yeah. those dropped at their time, like yeah. they just stood out from everything. Like yeah. I remember hearing the hard knock life beat for the first time, oh, yeah. nigga. That I was like, like what nigga? Hell yeah. yeah. I was like, doom, what the fuck? Doom, doom. Yeah. What did they get that sound from? It's a hard <laughs> That's from Annie. Hey, Annie. Yeah, yeah. 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 damn D. Annie. Yeah. Yeah. I still think Annie Goody Annie. Mob Sell Therapy one of the hardest yeah. beats. Yeah. Yeah. That shit. Yeah, boom, hell boom, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Come out of mm -hmm. It's boom. crazy. Uh, yeah, uh, shit, man. UGK. Yeah, UGK was hard. Diamonds and Wood. Like that beat. And Pimp C was making all that yeah, shit. Pimp C was making that shit. Beat. Pocket full of stones fucked the game up when it Even came up. Even Devin the Dude, bro. His, oh, his production man, hell was yeah. crazy, bro. Did though. Ain't nothing on top of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pharrell, too. You ever work with Pharrell? Yeah, I work with P. He's one of my favorite yeah, uh, producers. Man, yeah, for real. Them the Neptunes, too, yeah. man. Like that. Pharrell's that really knock talented. Knock yourself out, Jada Kiss. Pharrell is a beast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah yo. He, he makes that shit right there, too. For a year and a yeah, half. Yeah. Like that shit, man. That nigga had me trying to tie a fucking paper towel around my big ass head. My mom was mad as a motherfucker. Jazzy Faye? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jazzy Faye's hard. Faye nasty. He's a great writer, too. He slept on as far as like his yeah, writing. Yeah, he did. Girls in the club showing love. Yeah, he writes she a lot of good songs. Ass for the fuck, nigga. Whoa, whoa. No, he didn't. <laughs> yes, he did. 
Don't even love. What if that was your pastor favorite song? <laughs> <laughs> he just walked up to the pulpit on the instrumental. Everybody know what it is. <laughs> he got the organs playing that shit. Oh <laughs> 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 uh, shit. That nigga, that's stupid. Do you have a favorite record you did of your catalog? Or to like perform or something. Bruh. But you know, like so I got so bang. much shit like Niggas be playing that shit, I be like, damn, that shit is hard. Like, I be forgetting, you know? It, it take a nigga to play that shit. Cause I got like, I got so many mixtapes, <coughs> and they all just go for their time. Like, whatever time that shit was in, it, it's just jamming for that time. So, I like, I, I still like to perform shit like this plane. I think one of my favorite joints to perform that gets a good reaction is mesmerized, like when I do that oh, one. Oh, hell yeah. That's but like a real good, one, when I really, okay. really want to like fuck people up, I do something like the race oh, off, okay. uh, off of Rolling Papers. Mm -hmm. Or there, there's a lot of different songs. It depends on where I'm at, like Burn different countries. Road. Yeah, like different countries or different states. Look, like on stage and be like, oh nah, this vibe. Hey, play this. Yeah. Even then, he's you know playing. Just a random just one. Just a random one. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. That shit happens all the time. Because you go, I go based off of the crowd a lot of the times, and you'll know like how deep they go into the catalog. Mm -hmm. Like some people, they really do just want to hear the classics. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mind just performing my classics. Like some people will ask me, like, do I get tired of doing Black and Yellow or See You Again? I love performing those songs. I like you know what's hard, the coldest part though? Is you documented all that shit. Yeah, so they got to watch how that shit just yeah. got bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, from the from the theaters to the arenas to, yeah. the, to the sold out motherfucking yeah. Super Bowl yeah. type yeah. shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Who, who kind of like implemented that like into your head, like to document everything? Because a lot of people don't even know if this would have been documented. Mm. It can yeah, it bigger, yeah. Right? yeah, you can it literally can. go to day to day yeah. day one and and catch day up. Day. Yeah, yeah, that was that was really my thing. Like there was nobody like guiding me or telling me to do that shit. Mm -hmm. It was the, it's like how now social media is really important. Right. Back then social media was just starting. So right. you had people who had no idea about it. Right. And then you had people like me who were like running Invested. the experiment. Like, right. you know what I mean? And like, YouTube, I'm the consumer. Yeah, so I, I upload on YouTube. Yeah, I was just like, I made my YouTube channel and I followed certain people at the time and I watched what they did or heard what they talked about. And then I heard of, uh, from my YouTube channel, I heard about Twitter. And then I made a Twitter and then I just started building my following on there. And I would literally edit the videos myself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I wasn't really relying on the team or even worried about the best quality. I'm like, my shit is a movie. Niggas right. need to see this shit. Right now. Yeah, yep. And um, yeah, so I, I just was all about making content and all about interacting with my fans. And I seen the value in that shit really, really early before the label seen it and before it became mandatory, you know, for, for an artist so to you do. Came in, I showed leverage. Yeah, I, yeah, I showed the value in that shit. There's so many other artists that, that benefited from you doing that, because I remember looking back and seeing all of the guys from your class, y'all mm -hmm. interacting. The, yeah. You know, you, Wale, and niggas in the laundry room, and yeah. you know what I mean? All of that yeah. shit. Like, it gave a access to artistry that I think a lot of people probably don't appreciate, didn't appreciate then, but now, yeah. if you're one of them other artists that was around you at that time, you get to go back and see where you were at in yeah. 2012, 2013. Yeah, you know even with saying? Spitter, like, when I got around him, he was like, what the fuck you doing with a camera, nigga? Like, <laughs> was, you know what I mean? Like, that shit be like scary, a, so it's like, like, a to him, like, like you know what I mean? But then, he seen me on the couch, like, with my computer, like, you know, editing shit. And he was like, damn, you actually doing this shit yourself? And then he started to see like the effect of that shit, of, you know what I mean? Like how that shit was working. And then he started to realize like, oh, this is the fucking wave. Like this is how you, you do this shit. Mm -hmm. Going live on, like it was Ustream back then. Mm -hmm. Like nigga, I, I was going live from, from the apartment and shit. Like just doing shit that niggas wasn't really doing at that time, but like you said, niggas was scared of that they shit scared too. Scared of the camera. Cause like we was coming out of like a real trap era, nigga. Like right. hell yeah, Gucci yeah. and all yeah, of them. Jeezy, like, like yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Camera. We yeah, know yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Like we was just cool young niggas. Of course we was around, like all of that shit. But we was just more on some cool shit. Right. Yeah, yup. So like definitely it took a little bit of getting used to for niggas seeing cameras and all of that. Right. Now they but, like, fucking with. Yeah, yep. 
Yeah, <laughs> oh, literally. <laughs> now, you independent now. Mm -hmm. Like, What made you decide to go back that route and not sign another major deal? Because I'm sure they were offered to you. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I felt like I would be doing myself a disservice by signing another like major deal right now, you know? Especially when the independent feels so great. It's, where the game is at, it's really reliant on, everything relies on the artist. Right. Like everything, there's not a person at a label who's gonna do more for an artist than they can do for themselves. Right. Like the label has money and shit like that, but like if you're an artist and you're trying to like establish yourself and build a fan base, like being on, a label isn't the place to do it. You have to do that before you go to a label. Yeah. So it's like I'm me really being established, I don't have anything else to do. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm only doing stuff for my fans. Like, it's literally just for my fans so we can go on tour, so we can have music to listen to, so we can have merch to wear, and so the legacy continues so it doesn't die off. But like, as far as like a label goes, I'm gonna be doing all the fucking work, like you know what I mean. And I love my label that I that I came from, but they know how important me having the sauce was, you know what I mean. Like, and it's it's at a weirder place now, like with TikTok and all of that stuff, to where you know the older cats they don't get that shit, they don't understand it, and there's no young people that work at labels, so yeah, they're all my age, so it's like. I'm one of them now, you know what I mean? It just oh, yeah. it really don't make sense. There's ways to leverage it and shit like that. Like, if I was to do a project and they were, you know, there was like, it made sense or like they offered a certain amount of money, but to like sign with a label and to be like, yo, I'm gonna give y'all five albums or like, <laughs> hell no, I already, that shit. I already gave y'all six, 10, I don't know how many albums I gave them, like, you know what I mean? But it's like, yeah, including the soundtracks and all of that shit. Like, that shit adds up. It makes sense somewhere, but we good. Like, you know what I mean? I'm good to go. So it just makes more sense to just, like, you know, do it on my own and be cool with them. Plus, you already, you built your, that's how you got to the label anyway. Right yeah. Now, with that experience, you could take that shit and yeah. do that shit times two. Yeah, hell yeah. Like, with a name, with the experience, of course you don't get like playlisted and like bumped up to the top, but all you gotta do is spend money to do that shit. That's all they do, they spend money, you know what I mean? Like that's their job, they pay people and shit gets done. So like I got bread, so if I wanted to do all of that, then I just spend the money and, and just, you know what I mean? Be up there where, where the niggas is at. Right. Yeah, yeah. So do you gotta make something? Like does it change when you saying you have to spend your own money, does that make you more in tune with the record because you got to put your own money up like versus a label who you know like a black and yellow you knew but you ain't had to put your own money up if you mm -hmm. had to put your own money up you might not have known the way you did so mm -hmm. has that changed now that you got to put your own bread up i don't think it changes anything because it's always a gamble it's never guaranteed so if you're gonna bet you gotta bet big you know what i mean because you want the return to be big so if i believe in something um, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna go full on with it. And even if it doesn't come back, at least I'll fucking try it. Like, this is business, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. keep trying until it works. And I'm just so smart and tapped in that I know that nothing really moves without certain, you know, components. So a lot of niggas try to rush shit and do it too early and end up spending money on shit that would never even work anyway. <laughs> so what I, like, what I like to do is, you know, make things work in my favor and however long that takes to make it work in my favor, I'll wait and I know what it looks like and then that's when I make my move. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shit, cheers. Yeah. See, that's, that would come from the experience of being in the game. Yeah, yeah. You don't know how the music business is, is real. Yeah, you, yeah. You ain't got nobody behind you. Yeah. Then. Like you said, putting that money down and mm -hmm. all that independent shit. I just told my partner, he still trying to make music. I, he said, you need to sign me, bro. I said, if they ain't listening to me, <laughs> they ain't gonna listen to your ass. <laughs> but I can sit here and say that. Whatever you looking for me for, I can like label. Mm -hmm. You have to spend, have to, once I sign you, then what? I got to pay and put your ass in a position to make it look like this is what you doing before you got signed. How the hell I know I'm gonna get that money back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, speak to the responsibility of being independent though, because it sounds good. But yeah. Most people don't know the hard work that it really takes to be. Yeah, yeah. They don't even be in the studio. 
<laughs> yeah, it takes a lot of hard work. Like I was saying, you gotta you gotta bet on yourself. You gotta spend you gotta spend the money. You know what I mean? Like when you're on a label, they might or might not have a budget. Like for me, I was one of their top artists, so I could go to the studio whenever I wanted to. So that's over. So like now, you know, I'm getting studio. Like I'm paying for the studio. I'm getting a studio bill. So. You know, it's a business, so I'm every night I'm going in there spending money, hoping that that shit comes back off of a record or off of tour or off of whatever, whatever. Because if it don't, then I just spent a bunch of money and smoked a bunch of weed and fucking listened to a bunch of songs. So it's 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 definitely a, an approach where it's like, all right, we spending this money, but it's gotta come back. Like I'm gonna spend it. I'm not gonna hold back and be like, well, nah, I'm only go to the studio three nights out of the week. Right. Nah, I'm going in there every night still, nigga, cause I'm independent, I'm working for myself and I'm betting on myself and I'm putting all my money on myself. So when it comes back, it's gonna have that same energy that I put into it. If I put scared energy into it and I'm like, oh man, you know, we need to hold on to this brand because you know, the studio session is five grand. I'm like, fuck it, nigga. Like, get the whole house for the fucking week if we need to catch a vibe like but we need to make sure we make some shit nigga and then we've got to make sure we make some content and we got to make sure we interact with these fans and put all the energy into it to make sure that that shit comes back so we're not just fucking throwing money and praying that the fans love it because that's not what's gonna happen that's, yeah. that's not the business that we're in bro yeah, and you. like these days like the kids don't care about all that shit they don't care about the flashy shit Everybody got a fucking Rolls Royce. Like, 4G Autos is cheap as hell. And you can't tell whose chain is real or not. 13 year olds wear Balenciaga. Niggas don't care, bro. So you gotta really be bringing that heat. And that's what is gonna bring the money. So if you're spending money, you gotta make sure you're bringing that shit. And that's where I'm at with it as an independent artist. Hell yeah. Yeah, yep. That's my responsibility as an independent artist to wake up every day and make sure niggas, I got some uh, space rent free in your head. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you yeah. what, them big ass shoes you wore. That what was them shoes? Oh, they Balenciaga. Oh, no, not them. Too. The ones with the pointed toe that you had. Yeah, them was the vibe. new Balenciagas. Them ain't even come out yet. Oh, uh, word. You gotta deal with Balenciaga. Nah, no, but they they invite me to their shows and they send me gifts and stuff like that. They hold they hold me down. I ain't even tripping. I ain't even tripping. I spend bread. I'm gonna trip for you. The people from I don't want no. I don't want no one because I don't want no one because I don't because I don't want to be special with nobody. I want to be able to wear what the fuck I want to wear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with that being said, Taylor Gang, like the Chuck Taylors, like that was you stamped that. Yeah, yeah. You brought back. I mean, for sure. Like so, what? Was that because you? I remember you saying earlier in the interview, like you was worried about what Jays you was gonna wear. What yeah. made you say, "Fuck it, I'm gonna put on some white man '50s basketball shoes"? <laughs> no, <Nah>, for real. <laughs> no, nah, for real. Uh, that shit really started like because they was they was affordable. Like I was selling weed at the time, like I said, in high school. So I was like, nigga, I'd rather wear Chucks than anything. I didn't start wearing Jays till I met Currency. Like I didn't give a fuck about shoes. Like. I wore dicky suits and chucks in high school. Like that was my that was my uniform. Right. I didn't care about like fashion. I didn't care about like I listened to Dipset. Like you know what I mean. So it wasn't about like really buying fat like designer or anything like that. It, I listened to Dipset, State Property. So nigga, we wore Carhartts. I shopped at Army Navy. So it turned into a fad because I was on the road and I had one pair of camo shorts. And I had my chucks and it started getting cold and I pulled my socks up to make them be pants. And that was just my uniform on the road. Like that's that's what I smoked weed and traveled and did shows in. And then I bought a Louis belt as soon as I got some money. But like, that was just my thing. You know what I mean? It really wasn't, I, I kind of got made, not made fun of, but like niggas would laugh at me because I wore chucks, you know what I mean? But like, it is what it is. Like, I just made that shit popular. You did, cause yeah, niggas yeah. was walking around with Chuck Taylors on, like yeah, they yeah. was in the sand line. You ain't supposed to get the ank, the, the, low, the low cut. Then them niggas, niggas Never. had the low cut ones. Niggas was, to get the high niggas was tying them shit too tight yeah, too, nah, man. man. You gotta have like a like certain looseness to the... Yeah, you got like, they was about to jump over the, the gate in sand yeah, line, yeah. like for real. And the PF flyers. Oh my goodness, now them fly. Yeah, I, yeah. I like the PF flyers more than I do the Chucks. Yeah, the yeah. On the I never had a pair of Pierre Fly. Damn. You can get a pair. They like $16 now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> 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 
Yeah, some I remember British I wanted that bitch with some BK, that but. They had the Burger King. Well, them bitches so big. I stepped on everybody's shoe in that ball. <laughs> what year was yours? I had some I had when, they was, when they was hot shit. I had the one with the fat ass tongue. The tongue That's was big as a motherfucker. I had them like the year after they was hot. Damn. <laughs> no, I'm talking about when that was the shit. Yeah, after they was <laughs> When that was the shit to have. I was like, is anybody still rocking these? They like, uh uh. <laughs> Y'all remember them LA Gears? The Nigga, this was boy. What the LA Gears? What about the ones that look like hiking shoes? Yeah. What about the different colors? Yeah. Y'all never had the waterproofs? The waterproof LA Gears? No, the Timberlands. The fake Timberlands. The, 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 are you talking about the, the mountain, mountain? With the, the mountain, mountain on the side of it? Yeah. yeah. This nigga talking about the first downs. <laughs> See, in you couldn't wear a first down shoes. You couldn't wear a first down jacket, though. Yeah, a first, the first down, down jacket was boots. Right. But, but the boots, you can't wear the first down boots? I mean, yeah, you could wear them if you got them, but Damn. the first down jacket. But Tim's that, were expensive, that's though. That's what you would get in the always yeah. the yeah. Tim's was always like If you like couldn't afford them, them, uh, Eddie Bauer, you would get a first down. I mean, I wore, I wore them motherfucking shoes to school. Everybody was just like, I ain't never, like, they weren't even looking at the teacher no more. Everybody feet was just like, yeah. Got on. Yeah, I just felt my feet just lift up. Yeah. I was just getting carried out of school. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was a ghost that took me right on out of that bitch. I was like, damn. <laughs> I ain't never wear these again. But just I mean, regular as, boots. As regular far as fashion, boots, like I would say that you are iconic in hip hop fashion because sure. of what you didn't, what you've done, like For sure. and whether it be the merch or just the actual style. Yeah, yeah. It was a period of time where everybody was dressed like Wiz or. Wale or one of them, yeah, you know, one of y'all niggas at the time. Yeah, yeah the nah. they still, they still, they still do. It's just, it's just not popular to put me up there as the inspiration. But I inspire a lot of people. Why you think that is? What? But it's not popular to put you up there in the inspiration. Because I'm not loud about it. If I was loud about it, then you know a lot of people would be forced to agree. But I just let it slide. But you know what I mean? I've had eras of inspiring niggas like the Chucks. And then you got the blonde patch, and then I was the first to do my hair, uh, to dye my hair uh, color too, you as well. You did the patch, and nigga. Yeah, I was, I did the, I did the patch and the blonde dreads though, and like Here's having, having, having every pretty much like younger artist have dreads with colors in there. And then even now, like with the barriers that I'm breaking and the silhouettes that I'm doing, people are doing it, but they're not doing it on my level. So I introduce a lot of people to a lot of things that they're scared of. Even my run with Celine, even my run with a lot of, you know, just like, just a lot of the shit that I wear or how I wear it, they figure out, oh, Wiz did it. So he made it look cool so I could, I could do it now as well. And I don't really need the credit because I'm just gonna keep doing shit because I'm fearless. Like, I don't care if people talk about my shoes. I don't care if people talk about what I do, that's a part of like, you know what I'm saying? And they've been doing that shit before niggas knew who I was. I made it through that, I'll be all right. But what does happen is you start to see other people become, you know, oh, all right, you, you starting to look like Wiz now, my nigga. Yeah, I bet you are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> talk your talk, nigga. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same ones who be talking shit. But you independent, man. That's what happens when yep. you're a trendsetter and you're independent. Yeah. And, and to pick it back up off the uh, the music tip, and it's like, I understand, like, you, you feeling that leverage of you being independent because you got all these different, you know what I'm saying, lanes that you already just attacking. Yeah, so yeah. Coming with the label, it's hard for them to you know, dictate how they gonna use you. But even when I try to come to the label, I said, if I got 11 million views on a video, the artist you just signed barely got 600,000, what's the difference? I beat the, the number game. Yeah, if you'd had 20, you know, maybe we, we could have had a conversation. Yeah. I said, so it's not about talent anymore. Nah, that's what I was saying about the perception. And that's why I love music because <clears throat> I do this shit whether the perception is that I got the biggest record in the world or the perception is that I could be doing better. Right. Because if I drop a video, right now I might do 305, you know what I mean, in the first couple days. But there's artists on labels who they're doing 9 million, you know what I'm saying? But there's people who be like, oh, Wiz, I would expect you to do this, I would expect you to do that. But they don't know what goes into that. They don't know how maybe this person might have a huge following on TikTok. Mm -hmm. 
maybe this person might, you know, have worked with a director or did a collab with somebody mm -hmm. who they're following is the reason that they have nine million. Right. So it's like, it's all about figuring that shit out. And then once you do it, you really don't need the labels anymore. Because, yeah, because they're only stepping in when that shit is hot, bro. So if you're the one who, like, you could drop and you could do 10 or you could do however many numbers, you just keep adding that shit up. You just keep, and then by the end of the year, nigga, you'll have a plaque that says how many fucking views that you did and you could take that in there and show them that and their artists might have one video that did that and then they fell off after that but you stay consistent you know what i'm saying and that's where i look at it where it's more beneficial for the artist to where you don't look at those numbers they're gonna look at that shit as value but that's not really value it's just a perception and it's to blind you and make you think that that shit is actually real when you do some shit that's actually real, you're gonna know, bro. Like, you know what I mean? So that's what that's what it's more about building up and more about standing on. And that's why I fuck with TikTok. Because there's people who are on TikTok that you might not know them, you might not know them, you might not know them, but somebody in this room know them or somebody somebody's kid know them, and they'll freak the fuck out, yo. And like as a businessman, I gotta know. Like, I'm like, why is this person freaking out? I'm not looking at you like, oh, you just a TikTok star. I'm like, why the fuck is these niggas freaking out about this nigga? Like, you know what I'm saying? And what the fuck else can they do? You know what I mean? And them be the niggas who drop a video of them and that shit. I'm telling you, dog. Instead of hating right. on him, you gotta figure out how to do million dollar average. You know what I mean? Like, you can't hate on him. You gotta figure out how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful because mm -hmm. it's the game has gotten to a point where you can do that. You know what I mean? My daughter is the reason why I know anything about TikTok. She put me on. Like, it was so crazy. I she, love y'all skits, too, oh, bro. Oh, thank you, yeah, man. Yeah, and when, when, when she originally was telling me, Daddy, you got to put the stuff on TikTok, because all I use is Instagram. You uh -huh. know what I mean? But that's old man Insta yeah. uh, social media to yeah. my daughter. Yeah. So that's for old people. They don't fuck with that. You know what I mean? So she was like, Daddy, you got to put it on TikTok. So you I get called myself whole, totally different, putting yeah. it on TikTok. She called me, Daddy, you put it up wrong. Let me show you how to do it. She took the video. Yeah. Did a, put a whole bunch of different hashtags on it, did this, did that. I'm watching her work it, and I'm just like, man, I thank God I'm cool enough yep. to my daughter the way she want to show yep. me this. She yep. cracked the code. She yeah, just exactly. like, step out the room right yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how you fucking survive, you know, bro. They, I know when I was that age, I wasn't showing Wanda none of this shit I was mm. doing outside because mm. I didn't want her to know. But my daughter like, no, daddy, do it like yep. this. And yep. she put the same video back up, and then I put it up, it had like 7,000 views. She put it up, it hit like 1.3 million views. Same video. Yep. Same video. Yep. I'm like, so it just let me know that there's a gap. Yep. There's always going to be a gap. Yep. But you just got to be cool enough to where the people who are in place now yep. want to close the gap for you because yep. we can't do it. We can't do it, You know bro. what I mean? Sick. You can't do it. <laughs> a, lot of niggas is, a lot of niggas are scared to close that gap because yeah. they want to stand on like what they knew before. But if you know now, like, nigga, you... Instagram do feel old, but... It is, bro. It's, it, feel like, it feels like the hood, bro. I know it's Every old, time I go to Instagram, man, I feel like I'm going to the hood, bro. Facebook, that's where it's I never, I never was on Facebook. You ever see what nah, I'm saying? No. Yeah. Sleeper, you can make some butt on Facebook. I mean, you can, but I'm talking about... Like barbecue. I, I never forget when I knew Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know where you Yeah, I never forget when I knew Facebook <laughs> was too much. When I seen my mama and my <laughs> aunt in the comments arguing, I said, oh, no. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> I gotta get off of here. Cause I'm scared, cause they know me. They fuck around and go under the right post and be like, nigga, that's why your son. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh no, please, don't put that out there. Don't put that out <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, I had to get off uh, at Facebook too, man. Once I seen, you know how it show you what other motherfuckers on there liking and shit. Uh -huh. When I saw my auntie leaving the mouth, in the water under this nigga picture, I said, damn. Oh, uh, yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mouth in the water. Monty, hell, no, nah, bro. I had She's 60 something there. years hell, old. Hell, I got to get over there, bro. Just the mouth with the water. Yeah, nigga, see a nigga's hollering at my mama. Put, put, put right yeah. There. <laughs> I said, bro, a nigga. No, she old school. It was the mouth in the, in the actual water, oh, bro. God. Bro, Lord. it was a nigga hollering at my mama under a picture she put up of us. This nigga, I looked at this nigga page. He then took a picture of himself with a flip phone in the bathroom mirror. I said, oh, this nigga trying to, let me get off of here, man, because I don't want to see these old hey. niggas. Then the funny part is he reacted, and my mom was like, well, thank you so much. I'm like, you like this nigga with the flip phone, mom? Facebook giving people hope. Facebook make it seem like you still got it. Yeah. Motherfucker poker, you like, ooh. 
Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. You see what you, you like what you see? No. They act, that was an accident. <laughs> uh-uh. There's a lot of shit out here that'll give you hope. TikTok give you hope. A good trip to Walmart. I hate that they don't close that motherfucker. Man, if, you just ever, if you ever feeling TikTok, it. I mean, uh, Walmart used to be 24 hours. I bro. hate that they not 24 hours no more, bro. I used to walk in there at 3 o'clock in yes. the morning. What you want? Nothing. Nothing. I just want to walk in this bitch because it's the only thing. Over. Yeah, you go in there and see all them people that's on the missing post and they're working. you like, that was the best part about what I'm telling you. Chico, that's fucked up. They was. I'm telling you some real shit, man. <laughs> Don't go to Walmart after 2 o'clock in the morning. You're going to see all the missing people. Walmart. <laughs> Walmart working, bro. I'm telling you, oh my God. <laughs> I'm telling you bro. Right. Man. <laughs> I miss them random Walmart trips Hell at 3, yeah. 4 in the morning. You just go in there and buy random ass shit, have groceries and a fucking workout bench. I went to my first Black Friday at Walmart. Ooh, I know that shit was hell. I almost seen a nigga die, bro. Damn. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, fucked what? up. That's why I'll never go back. It was a TV, bro. <laughs> no, hell no. <laughs> It almost fell on his head, and then somebody came and caught it, and, and a lady screamed. She was like, you gotta kill him! I was like, oh my God, bro. When you, when this was before you was famous? It was, it was, I was on my way to be famous. I was at the club, and you I told my niggas. TV. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, what up? Hey, guys. I told my niggas. That's the beauty I told of my Walmart. niggas. <laughs> that's I said, hey, I don't know Walmart, what the fuck bro. y'all doing after the club. I'm going to Walmart, <laughs> nigga. It's Black Friday. Exactly. <laughs> going to give me a flat screen. Exactly. Will you? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> about Walmart, niggas. You could just be in the club, 2.30. What you about to do? Man, I'm already running Walmart. Hell yeah. 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 I used to love telling the white man get the BB gun out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, you'll grab that for me? Sure you want it? I was like, can you grab that for me? <laughs> I'm play with it. <laughs> In your face. <laughs> <laughs> Walmart they got strange ever since they stopped selling fish. <laughs> and that bitch balling. Ah, it's my I probably have that twice out of my lifetime. What you talking about? My mentor Samoa man? I yeah. asked him that too. Unfortunately. He's not Samoan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Then the, 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 the Khalifa Kush with like, <laughs> smokes more than Yeah, shit. the Khalifa yeah. Kush. I'm like, high hell, bro. Like, we all are. I've been high since the beginning. Who would you say is, you know, as far as mm. you have your own strain? No. That's different. That's a, I'm sure you involved too, just from the type of nigga you is. Yeah. Like, who would you say? Shit you, from the sleeves, yeah, right? Exactly, from the mm -hmm. sleeves. Right. Yep. So, who would you say you, you know, learn the most from on that side of the game? The, 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 Definitely Burner. Burner? Yeah. Shout out to Burner, man. Yeah, for real. Big baby. Burn, man. Shout out to Burner, man. Burner just had a baby baby boy. Yeah. Congratulations, man. Little, little yeah, he yeah. just opened another store somewhere. Yep. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Burner, Burner taught me everything I know about the weed game. Um, I was I was always smoking good weed, but until I met Burner, that's when I started smoking real weed. And he taught me about, you know, the soil and just everything that oh, goes into it. That's a nigga. Yeah, he, he, Burner taught me everything. And then he was ahead of the curve. Uh, oh, damn, my bad, bro. You good. Uh, he was just ahead of the game as, uh, on, the, on the legal side of it. Right. Um, he took a lot of risks, you know what I mean? Moving a lot of weed around, showing a lot of love to a lot of rappers and right. or just putting a lot of different people on and just linking a lot of things that what you see now are, you know, is uh, the the weed game. There's a lot of other people in there too, right. but Burner, he's, the OG, he's yeah. the OG and he made a lot of money and he just really, really, you know, shared the game with me, put me in the game, brought me the strain Khalifa Kush, the original strain, and just, you know, showed me how to turn it into a business and allowed me to, you know, Create. do my own thing. He never was like, yo, I want, a piece of Khalifa Kush, or you got to do this, that, or the other thing. Yeah, and he loves the plant, bro. Like he loves weed. He loves the culture. He's really like an old school weed nigga. Like you know what I mean? And Willie like, Nelson type nigga. Yeah, then that's that's not really like common in the game. Like somebody who will pull up. He flies to different countries. He meets with all of the distributors. He meets with the growers. He shows people how to grow. Hey, um, bro. <laughs> You'd have been, you'd have been all right. Man, I'm just still, I don't know what that was. They'd have put, they'd have put you on. Man, this motherfucker ain't talking about shit. 
Ada. Ditch week. Been down here for two oh, weeks. Shit. Oh shit. Ada had you. Been down here for two weeks. Just give me two weeks. Give me two weeks. Now look, everybody always put you on their list of people to smoke with. Who you, who you got left you want to smoke with? Ah uh, shit, there ain't nobody left, man. I, I, sm I smoked with George Clinton. That shit was cool as hell. Dang. Yeah, yeah. I you rolled it? I gave him some of my weed. Okay, okay. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I gave Smart him some. Smart question. Yeah, I gave like, him some. I, uh, Did you roll it? <laughs> hell. <laughs> my man don't do that shit no more, man. He just I smoked was, uh, weed. That nigga like 80 years old, bro. I was oh, yeah. talking to a dude in Vegas uh, at the cookie store, ironically, and I can't remember his name. God for, forgive me for not remembering your name, but he was just telling me about how the weed game work and all that, and he was like, guys who really know weed always got a special stash or something mm -hmm. that you ain't seen in years. And mm -hmm. I always, I'm like, man, where the hydro at? He was like, oh, trust, you run up on the right motherfucker, he gonna pull that job. Yeah. With the, do you have? That's that right there. That's it? That's my personal stash right there. Yeah, I mean, I got some other things on. I got some other personal th stash is the turkey bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got some job. other things on the menu because everybody don't like to get as high as I get. But this is this is good. This is good as it's gonna get right here. Y'all don't do shit like this. I told you I've been doing this shit for a long time, man. You got about this shit? What you think this is? A little under a half. Okay, you know what you're talking about. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Bye, bye, this nigga impressed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Bye, 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 bye. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Quick pop quiz. Yeah, what is it? Okay. 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 Cause you know a nigga to try to up it like no nigga, this is a half cent, bro. Cool. Brother, brother. Sam right here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe a little under, maybe a little. Under. Maybe a little under, maybe a little under. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It don't even fucking matter. That's the part nobody ever talk about. How many people a day ask you for some weed? Nigga. Out of bless the hood. Everybody. <laughs> Tell them nigga we Everybody. on. Tell them call us. Let them know we're sitting. Stop playing the block on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like, Man, what are we? Niggas, <laughs> 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 yeah. I get surprised though, because I don't even be asking niggas to smoke no more. I just be like, I be chilling and then they be waiting like. What a weed that, When this nigga go ask You was an occasional weed smoker. Like, I used to hate it back in the day when motherfuckers like match up. Because it may be three other niggas on his blunt, but you only on your blunt. So when you match up with somebody, now you gotta smoke with three extra people. In Pittsburgh, that's like, you could come around a couple times without weed, but after a while, if like you really hang with niggas, everybody got their own sex. So right. we all just rolling up. And nobody really like cares, you know what I'm saying? It's like I might have a little bit more weed than you, so it's like we all gonna get high. Like if whoever's up, we get in stone. Right. But like it was like, and that's the thing too. Like niggas, <laughs> that's the thing too. Niggas gotta have niggas gotta have good weed. You gotta have good weed karma. Like you gotta. What's they play that? What's weed karma? Like you can't you can't really you can't really trip off blood. Like you can't be stingy off of it. Like you no gotta word. you gotta know that that more is on the way. Okay. So like the niggas who trip out about weed and be stingy about weed, like they're they're, they're the ones who don't get it in abundance. Like, you know what I mean? Like the way that I hand out weed, that's because God blessed me and He's gonna give me weed for the rest of my life. So it's like, you know, Everybody smoke. Said. Like, we all gonna enjoy Boy, this, this shit. shit. Wrong, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Not for real. Give it away, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good weed karma, bro. It's just People bud, bro. Me. I mean, that's what I did. You gotta Maybe pass it down. For the giveaway weed that somebody gave me. Nah, yeah, it's that's paying for it. in the commandment somewhere. If somebody gives you some weed. Up. You gotta, if somebody gives you some weed, you at least gotta share it with somebody you care That's about. What, yeah, see, I told you. Well, you right. Like, you gotta have one shit. person where you like, nigga. Yeah, guess what? Yeah. Where's Khalifa just put a, <laughs> a little bit over or under <laughs> half in my hand? Or if it's, a, if it's a woman too, like, hey, baby, like, I got, yeah, yeah. fucking, yeah. That's the mic, Make, show. make that lasagna. Just grab a little. Oh, yeah. Chicks love weed. Right. Oh, you know that she pulling up here. Definitely like love not to pay for it. You know, <laughs> love weed, old black women. Yep. And they had it in their titty. It don't matter how loud it is. And they always have their own napkin. Oh, put me some of that right there. That's all I need. And then put it in the you know, housekeepers. Hey, listen. I'm going to be real. We 
you gonna save all them roaches you got for sure and put them in like the little museum we got yeah for so sure it's gonna be like three on like on some martin luther king shit. yeah gonna be posted up like we is blunt mm-hmm. nah for real <laughs> that's a picture yeah that's a picture <laughs> <laughs> If somebody yeah. saved Bob Marley's joints, they would definitely be in a museum. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Everybody ain't got no Wiz who, who got Wiz Khalid? I know you'd have got hundreds of niggas the highest yeah. they ever been. Who got Wiz the highest he ever been? Uh, be Real. I, ever, I done heard real. niggas yeah. say that. Be yeah. Real asked me to come do the little smoke box shit. Yeah, I, that box. nigga was like the hot box. He was yeah. like, nigga, nigga told me, hey, yeah, but bring your own blood. Don't smoke that shit. They be smoking. You ain't ready. I'm nigga. like, I'm not going. Be real <laughs> have you. Be real have you stone, bro. Yeah, so you say be real got you the Yeah, high. yeah. Be real is the only nigga to give me that stone. What's that stone for with? Just ready to leave the room. <laughs> I was ready to leave, dog, but I couldn't. I was like, man, I, I don't want to look like a hoe, but I'm ready to get the fuck out of here, dog. Them niggas had you ready to tap out. I was ready to get the fuck out of there, yo. That's crazy. And you can't quit, Wiz. Hell no. You can't. Hell no. That's too much pressure. Them niggas smoke so much weed, dog. That's too much pressure. If they were here smoking right now, you'd be like, what the fuck is going on? Nah, it's a different strain. It's a different strain, and it's like six of them with joints this long, bro, smoking nonstop, just passing them shits to you nonstop, bro. You would be upset. Like I them, would be out of there. Nigga, Judge me. Be real, Judge them me. niggas. I am a bitch. I'm out this month. Be real, and them niggas. Smoke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, hell no. Nah. And, there, and every still. joint is rolled perfect. It's got a glass tip on it, so it hits good. And he's going to make sure that you get it. Like, as soon as he lit that shit, them niggas smoke so much fucking weed, dog. And they all got like That's three to six jars of just bomb ass weed, bro. Be real, and them niggas get it in. Hell. Glad to go hard. Yeah, yeah. What about yeah. the macaroni? The noodle. Put the noodle yeah. in that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the noodle yeah, filter. I ain't gonna say it on camera. <laughs> I seen nigga a, a legend smoking a blunt with a macaroni noodle in the tip. You ever see Don Juan hit the weed? Oh, oh yeah, that nigga. Yeah. Yo, yeah, that nigga yeah. Don Juan, uh, really? said, he smoking through his nose. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga Don Juan put the blunt in his nose. <laughs> <laughs> no, he don't. Yes, this he, he do. do. Swear to God, he do. Man. This how he, this how he do it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, keep that, dog. <laughs> you keep that. I don't want the booger blunt, nigga. You straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Church hit the blunt through his nose, girl. Yeah. What'd that do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We had to get a boy here and ask him. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that's 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 too far. I get yeah, my brother I mean, here. He's like, you're doing the wrong. Too goddamn far. That's <laughs> too goddamn no, far. Too goddamn bro. far. You gotta draw the line somewhere. <laughs> Can't just be doing every goddamn thing. <laughs> 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 you can keep that no cap, OG. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Where you see the booger like the booger snap? Uh, hey, before you. Uh, 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 <laughs> when he pull uh, it out. Uh, uh, nah. He gonna oh, deny it. We, it's we. Look, it's we. Hell no. Nah. What do we do? I ain't even fucking. I ain't even hungry no more. I see some shit like that. I'm straight, dog. That nigga was like, he's gonna yeah. throw it up. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. What was your, your favorite shit before you got your own weed? Um, shit, it's always been this, man. I've been smoking this forever, bro. You been don't smoke nobody shit. Uh-uh, I've been smoking this for almost 12 years, bro. Yeah. Nigga ever right. tried to hit your weed with you and it was the fake version? No, yeah, I, know, I know by the smell. I, I, a nigga can't have me no fake KK. Oh, for sure. For real? Yeah, I could tell by the you smell. You know it's out here somewhere. Not here. I mean, not with you. But yeah, nigga can put a name on it, but yeah. nigga can't fake this, bro. This, right. You definitely this can't, yeah, you can't that's fake the, this. That's the one, not the two, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, this nigga, no. Like I said, if there was a weed Olympics, yeah, and you, I can't, had to, you can't fake that. I had to put a team up. This nigga is going on the team. Like, mm-hmm. I've seen this, him and my man drinking this. My man drinking this. I seen this nigga drink. This nigga's a legend. He do the edibles. I never forget my man drank. Had the, the edible, the big ass edible Rice Krispie treat. This mm-hmm. nigga ate the whole Rice Krispie treat, then turned the bag inside out, licked the bag, and threw the bag on the ground and said, Yeah, Stepped nigga. on it. Then, nah, he didn't. He, uh-huh. he pulled me and said, Yeah, nigga, a kitty cat gonna get that bitch later and be tripping out this motherfucker. <laughs> 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 that nigga drank cold, my nigga. My nigga Drake the Poor coldest nigga ever. Cat. He's um, he in North Carolina now, but I'm telling you, he's he's not gonna stop, and this nigga's not gonna stop evil. But like seeing a nigga be able to 
smoke that much weed and still function is amazing to me, bro. I be yeah, you just have this to, nigga. you have after a while you have to like certain shit you have to put extra effort into. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't give a fuck. That's yeah. all it do is yeah. just make you like yeah. you know when you like I give a fuck. I'm about to do it right now. It just take those away. Yeah, for me. But like I say, the highest I've ever seen him in with my own, and I've seen this nigga smoke. I'm talking about with the best of them. But Snoop had my nigga picking lint off the microphone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted my shit to look better on TV. <laughs> no, nah, now nah, we was getting ready to do some shit on Wild and Out. We had a bunch of little lint balls on the microphone, and I was like, I at least want my shit to look better. Right. Then the other team, so I pulled all that shit off of that. <laughs> this shit, this weed down, man. You got enough weed, that bro. That nigga low about to cry. <laughs> what you don't know is this enough weed to last us regular civilians. <laughs> for a long time. Oh, yeah, shit, I get a handful of that shit. I'm gonna be smoking that shit for a fortnight. It's gonna last me forever. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, my nigga. Yeah, we're gonna smoke the hell out of all this, man. What? That's dope. All this KK. And it's Khalifa Kush. Hell yeah. yeah you oh, we gotta KK. we gotta show this too. Wiz bought this, bought this through for me. Explain what this is. This is That's a, just a gift bag for you. A gift bag, man. You That's this gift um, bag. That's um Should we open the, it up? Yeah, you can open you can open it up. Yeah, Pause. you gotta open it up. There's, a, the there's, a, there's the the other strains in there. Yeah. More weed! Yeah. You should More weed, y'all get a free roll. You that's, fucking that's the, shouldn't that's have. That's guy. That's a little bit lighter than the cake, than the Khalifa Kush. Okay, this is lighter? With it. Yeah, and then that's Khalifa Kush right there. This is right Khalifa there. Kush, okay. And that's Violet Sky, and then that one's Khalifa Mints. And, uh, talk think, your talk. I think Mints is in This it. is KK. That's KK. And then I think there's a Mints pre roll in there. Yeah, this is, this is, this, uh, KK? Yeah. this is Khalifa Mints right here. So mints, explain yeah. the difference between the, uh, the, the, the mints and the cushion. They're just what, different what hybrids. Right They're different here. crosses. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is both of these are uh, infused. Clayton, you got to smoke some of this. Violet Sky. Oh, yeah. The infused, and the the, infused, for mint. the infused ones have wax in them. Oh, wow. Those are really strong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so oh, when yeah. you want to get super duper high, this is what you do. <laughs> just orange Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just going to get a weed to yeah. your nice yeah. game. He's just going to roll up some. Huh? in there, too. Those are the ones when you want to get real stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, yeah, yeah. It's that's smooth. crazy. You do the. Oh, uh, uh, you do the. Mac uh, and Devin went to high school. Cat want to ask you about the movie. Yeah, just how that process. It was cool making that movie, man. Um, so when I first moved to LA, he just had me come to the studio and was like, nigga, we filming a movie off rip. Like that was a, like the first thing we started doing. And we got in the studio and we started making um, the soundtrack for it. And that's when we did Young, Wild and Free. And it was a really quick process. And it kind of just showed me how like being your own boss is like in this shit. Like when you really want to do something, you just get the team together and do it. Yeah. And uh, he said we were going to do that shit. We wrote it. We went over our lines for a little bit. And then we uh, we filmed it in about a month. And um, the soundtrack was what, what was really able to like bring it out to the world. Because, um, you know, Snoop did a, us a huge favor by doing like a whole promo tour with us. So we went to, and did radio. And, yeah, a whole lot of weed smoke. We went and did radio and did shows like at night in certain, um, certain markets. And that promoted the album and the movie and um and Young Wild and Free as a record. But when the movie came out, it wasn't like a it wasn't like a nod it was a big thing, but um that was still like in the DVD age. So like you might have had it or you might not have had it. But then when streaming started happening, that's when it became more like a cult classic and shit like that's that. That's definitely what it is. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like it became like that Stoner movie where it was like, yo, we gotta watch Mac and Devin go to high school type right. shit. You know? right. yeah. Gonna, you interested in doing some more movies and shit like yeah, that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I want to do tons of movies, uh, especially with me working out and doing the mixed martial arts. I want to do like some kung fu movies. I want to do. You want to do the Karate King? Yeah, I mean, you know, what I mean? whatever. You, know what you should do, bro. You should go to Korea. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it in Korea, bro. But you got to save black and yellow nigga. Nah, I was about you gotta, to say. You got to save. <laughs> <laughs> do uh, what was it? Young Potter <laughs> Freak <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Son <laughs> on me, free. <laughs> they fucking that up. They fucking that up. You know they fucking. <laughs> but yeah, I, I thought you was gonna tell him do your do, favorite movie, The Last Dragon. Oh, yeah, he definitely man. I fuck with that. I want to do action shit. 
I love old pimp movies, so if there was like a way to bring that a type kung of... A kung fu pimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dolomite type shit. Yeah, of course, kung like comedy, fu pimp. like weed shit. And then having a, you know, an 11 year old, a son, I want to do some family type shit. You know what I mean? I want to do all of that stuff. Like, are you more, speaking of your son, like, are you more, you know, are you expecting him to come home and be like, just because of his genetics, like, daddy, I'm high as a motherfucker. Nah, like, nah. You know what I mean? I, I'm actually, like, this generation, man, they're not really that into weed, bro. Like, they look at that shit like old man stuff. He's not like. For real? He's not eager to smoke and get high. Like, maybe when he's a teenager yeah. and shit like that, he might be like, oh, okay, you know but what I mean? When day at Wiz Khalifa, you might just be like, man, get the fuck away from me with that shit. Yeah, like, he might, he might, he might not. You know like, I, mean? I, don't, I don't really have any expectations. And, like, honestly, you know, just thinking about it, I just want him to be innocent as long as possible. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? So All the way. I just don't want to see his face being stoned. I can't even think about that. You yeah. know, that's I'm crazy. Not that that's my that's my baby boy, yeah. man. Yeah. Like, you know crazy. what I mean? You think about him growing up, though. Yeah, like, yeah. Man, it's my they own they grow up, not down. That's yeah. Just crazy. My, yeah. My pops didn't smoke weed. My my mom did, and it, I didn't smoke because of her. I wasn't like, yo, my mom smoked weed, so I gotta be like her. I just bumped into it and like really figured out that I love that shit. When your first time, your mom first time catching you high, you remember? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I, like, I said the dumbest shit too. I said what every kid said. I was like, man, I got a headache, man. <laughs> she was like, nigga, you ain't got no headache. You were high. Y'all some high niggas, both of y'all. It was me and my homeboy. Actually, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to walk past fast as hell. She on the couch, smoking with her homegirl. She like, look at these niggas. <laughs> They're high. I was like, nah, you know, I'm not feeling too good, man. <laughs> That's a high answer. Yeah, you ain't got no fucking headache. You high, nigga. <laughs> woman, she was in my face. Yeah. What's wrong with your eyes? I was like, man, you ain't, man, come on, man. <laughs> I'm geeked out. That's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. It was so funny. She was, she was sniffing me, bro. She was like, shh. I thought I was low, dog. Right, right. I thought I was low. I was not low. She see my eyes from across the room. Yeah, hey, cause she know. Damn, nigga. I knew I was always gonna smoke weed when Juicy J released Gotta Stay High. I heard that song, I gotta stay high. I, 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 I. I was like, oh yeah, that's me right there. Forever. And forever, nigga, till I die. Nigga, I'm smoking weed forever, nigga. That's when I made my mind up. Cause I was back and forth a little bit, like, you know what I mean? I was like, you ain't never I was like, man, quit. am I smoking weed too much? Nah, I never quit. I was like, you never took a little, little, little Hell no, nah. hell no. Nah. You never slow down? Hell no. Nah. So you done sped up? Nah, I wasn't say I sped up. I just, you know, I just deal with what I got. Well, that's me. Well, that's <laughs> <laughs> hey, with the good Lord bless me with, I'm gonna smoke it. <laughs> Crazy, man. Yeah, it's, it's definitely that thing, right? Now. I see why you love it. Yeah, no, nah, I never slowed down. I knew, I knew when, when Juicy released that song, because I just connected with it so much. I was like, nigga, that's that's exactly how I feel, and I and I don't, and I'm not and I'm I'm proud of that shit. You know what I mean? I'm gonna smoke weed forever. And then everything that I did after that, all the research that I did, and everything that I heard about weed after that was fucking positive. There was nothing ever that made me want to change my mind. So yeah. Did you ever start on mid? Yeah, hell yeah. We call it 50 in Pittsburgh. Okay. 50. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. 50, yeah, <laughs> 50, yeah. yeah. Don't you yeah. speed up that mid. Nigga, I had to get off that mid, bro. Thank you. Picking seeds out. Yeah, that shit's embarrassing, nigga. Pop, pop. You smoking with a nigga and that seed start burning, you be like, uh, uh, <laughs> you trying to blow that shit out. Like, like, you <laughs> put that shit out fast nigga, as hell. Nigga, run. <laughs> 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 circle that seed out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my nigga, you fucking cracking this? Is it like, nigga? As soon as you smell it, you be like, who the fuck smoking seeds, kid? You got a, you smoking 50 in here, yeah. Nah, hell no. At least put some glue on the hose. You be like, nigga, put it out and light it again. Shit. Put that shit out. Smoke that shit out. That shit look like a firecracker when it come out. <laughs> hey, when it burning, that shit's like this, yeah. nigga. <laughs> you, ever had, you ever had one drop out? Hell like, yeah. Hell yeah. 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 Shit burn a hole holes. in your sweatpants, nigga. Big holes in your clothes. Oh, man. That's for real. popping there, <laughs> man. Speaking, you said Juicy J, I got to stay high. I got to ask you this question, too, because there's so many weed anthems. Like, if you had to pick a top five weed list of songs, the five songs that the niggas had to put a playlist together that's stoners for real, the stoners playlist, what's going, what's going, what's your five song? Mary Jane from Rick James. Mary Jane. Um, 
Hey from Crucial Conflict. Yeah. Hey in the middle of the ball. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, I'm drawing a blank. I gotta put a Snoop Dogg song. Um, G's Up, Hose Down by Snoop Dogg. Okay. A lot of people ain't never heard that one. That's that's on like the the real version of Doggy Style. Mm -hmm. uh, I gotta put a Devin the Dude song in there. So I guess uh, shit. Which Devin song we gonna go with? Doobie Ass Trey. Cool, I was gonna say that too. Yeah, we gotta go with that one. That's what, three or four? That's four, you got one more. And uh, I put Styles P in there. Oh yeah. I get high, high, high. high. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gangsta ass weed, Gangsta ass weed, What the fuck of this shit? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was like the hardest. That nigga said, he was saying some shit on there. He was like, he was loading up the weed so he didn't have to load his gun yeah, up, bro. Yeah, yeah you know like, I mean? nigga. I'm far, from a, I'm far from a stoner, I would never consider, but I know one of my favorite weed smoking songs is Busy Bone. That who wanna buy, 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 <laughs> but smokers only. Uh huh. <laughs> but smokers only. But smokers only. Only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, them niggas was a hood gospel group. She a person of the month. Is a weed song. They had Buddha Lover too. Yeah, yeah they Buddha Lover. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Oh, we got another question. Ah, it's a lot. Yeah. What? What's what? Still blazing was inspired See, by just another one. Extra stoned. I had to like that was. <laughs> I think somebody sent me that beat from the internet. Like, I was just interacting with the fans, and I was like, yo, send me some shit. And I heard the fucking, um, the sample on there. I knew the sample because my pops listened to reggae music and all that shit, so I already knew the sample. But I was like, yeah, this is the perfect weed song. And, like, at that time, I would always do one specific, like, weed song. Like, everything else, I would just mention weed in it. But I got that from Bone. Like, they would always have one specific weed song. So that was the inspiration behind that. It's like, Bone always put a weed song on the album. I got to have one that's just dedicated to weed. Low song. You know, that's why I had a tag on there where I was like, use that make a weed song. Yeah, yeah. Still smoke. Still smoke. Yeah, yeah. Twister got one, too. Smoking Bud. Smoking Bud, yeah. Acapella, Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Oh, uh, it's mystical too. Yeah, mystical. Still, Still smoke, smoke it. But I smell, smoke. Still smoking weed. That yeah, was nigga hard. Got that's hard. Five versions of that shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's I fuck with that. Oh, nigga, weed, weed, weed songs bitch. are essential to the culture. <laughs> man, for real. Even Afro Man, if you play that shit, that, that shit, shit gonna go hilarious. crazy, man. Man, that nigga Afro that's Man. That's a good so song funny, to play, man. nigga. <laughs> He had a video where the police raided his house, uh -huh. and this nigga made, made a song, song about, about that shit. He was watching the cops on <laughs> oh the thing rapping God, about it. Bro. Yeah, yeah, nigga. I tried to bro. make him apologize for that. <laughs> that shit, <was> nigga. <laughs> Stole my gate. Where you gonna find in my CDs? That <laughs> shit is so hilarious, man. You gotta listen to that shit, Flash. That, that nigga's a gun, Afro, Afro man. man. Afro man, bro. They, he made a video from the 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 camera footage from his house about the police raiding his house, my nigga. That shit is hilarious. Mac, Mac Dre was really it's big. Real. They really raided his Mac, house. Mac right? Dre was real big in the weed culture, too. Oh, yeah. Like Mac him Dre. And, and Yuck Mouth and all them pools. Like, a lot of the niggas from the Bay Area, they smoke, they smoke big weed, man. What, what would you say the best weed comes from? The, the, Bay, Area. the Bay Area. Yeah. The Bay Area. Oh, got the best Bay weed in the world. In the world. Yeah. In the world, yeah. To this day, like, the, the weed on the streets, nigga, in the Bay, yeah, you gonna smoke some fire. They got good weed in Detroit. 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 Yeah, 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 hell yeah, they got really good weed in Detroit. They take pride in their weed in Detroit. Yeah, yeah. They be like, nigga, come on, right here, my baby. <laughs> yeah, my baby. I got you, my baby. Smoke this one, my baby. Yeah, yeah. Real weed here. Please tell these motherfuckers, Denver, Colorado is trash. 
I don't want to talk bad. It's different. No, it's right. not. It's not like it's not the <laughs> shit. Denver, Denver's not the shit. It's not the shit. I don't want to call it trash. All right, all right, all right. But it's not the shit. It's that's, not that's the a, shit. That's a, it's that's not. A, that's about it's not. I've heard Amsterdam. 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 It's not. It's trash. Yeah, that's the formal way of saying it. I've heard Amsterdam. That's the political way of saying it. Yeah, very political because I'm in the weed business. Yeah, It's not the shit. Yeah, yeah. You can say what you want to say. Shit, bullshit. Amsterdam. Same thing, they gotta get it together. For real? Yeah, they get it together. Yeah. Amsterdam. A- Amsterdam is stuck in their ways. They don't like to grow how niggas, other people grow. They're like, yo, we grow it like this. This is how we like it, blah, blah, blah. Nigga, the game changed. Come on. Come on. Right. Come on, like, Come for on, real, man. for real. Nobody don't turn into booze. Come on! <laughs> 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 yeah, Colorado's the same. Like they really ain't trying to like up it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. Nah. How you get weed? Yeah, hey, stone, come on, we got it. They're cool with where they're at. It, it's probably because they started so early in the game. Like they were one of the first ones to be doing that shit. Right. So they're like stubborn with changing that shit. But they don't know. want to change at all. Yeah, I know them niggas in Oregon probably like, what about us? They done made crack legal in Oregon. <laughs> they got some good weed in Florida, nigga. Oregon. Everything legal in Oregon, they nigga. You can smoke, you yeah. can do dope and yeah. everything in, yeah. in Oregon. Yeah. I try to find I some tell good my brother, weed you need to get the fuck on yeah, and go to yeah. Oregon. <laughs> Back your bags, man. Go up there, man. <laughs> go to Oregon, man. Do that shit on the street. Live <laughs> your life. <laughs> Let me get it This nigga is. Send me pictures. <laughs> 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 uh, bro doing crack in Oregon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look at bro. That's how you said it, He done met his friends. He got a girlfriend. Oh, fuck it, he Oh, shit. That's no ass. I'm proud of that. <laughs> oh hell, your cat want to get you on the cartoon shit. Cat oh, really yeah. don't want to tell you his favorite yeah. rapper. Yeah, for sure. Hey, yeah. hey, you never see him act like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we had plenty of niggas on here. That nigga at the front. He like, hey. Uh-uh. Tell him about the show. Tell him about the show. I want to see. See if he'll do the show right quick. Nah, that nigga really just trying to get one of these. <laughs> see, I fuck with you, bro. Please. <laughs> please, please, let me get one of these. <laughs> Yo, we gotta smoke this shit and get it off the street. They in the street. Get it off Y'all the in the streets not ready for this shit, right? He said we need to get all this off the street. This shit and get it off the street. What happened? Nigga, stupid. Oh yeah, man, this is legendary, man. Yes, we got Wiz and we, we been waiting on you to come. What's next? Wiz. We got a gift for. Oh, we do got some gifts. Yeah. Man. Oh shit. They gonna put that shit on in your next video, my boy. <laughs> oh hell yeah. <laughs> Got me another tray. This, mm-hmm. this crew neck is hard. Yeah, I'm your talk. Yeah, I've been on my crew neck shit. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is perfect. That's, mm-hmm. right. That's fire. Let me see. Oh, it's just sweatpants? Oh, yeah, sweatpants and sweatpants. Oh, yeah, that shit go weed. Yeah, that's the whole. Oh yeah, hell yeah, that's the whole. That's the whole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is perfect. Thank you, guys. More Man, thank you. It's fresh as hell too. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I'll do. I'm gonna do a TikTok in this. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you heard what he said? <laughs> you heard what he said? What side you up? March. Go oh, grab one of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and two TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> 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 you should come out with a logo and stuff of a nigga go out like this. No, nah, for real. That might be the new logo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sprinkling the weed. Sprinkling the weed. Would you, would you, you put the weed in the weed? That might be the new logo. Like this, more please. <laughs> more please. <laughs> for sure. No, Mr. Could, could you spare just a crumble of reef, please? We've heard so much about it, but we just can't afford it. Oh no, shit, man! Appreciate you, OG. Yeah, for real. What? But yeah, what's next though? Y'all what you got coming, you. man? I heard you say you recorded all these songs. And yeah, down here. yeah. I'm gonna drop Cushion Orange Juice too. Uh oh. Okay, hold up. Yeah, yeah. Wait, hit it. Mm-hmm. When can we be expecting that? Um, I'm gonna drop that on the same day that the first one dropped, the original. So I think it was the second week of April. Uh oh. Yeah, oh, yeah. So oh, right around, right around the corner. Yeah, right around the corner. Oh, that's Let me ask you this: yeah. Are you like? You gonna still drop mixtapes and albums, or not that you? I still like to drop mixtapes, but just with how streaming is, it's like 
I'm figuring it out, honestly. Like, and this was this was like my my experiment. I dropped two. Uh, well, I think I dropped six mixtapes last year. But I dropped two at the end of the year. Uh, one was called Cali Sober, and the other one was called Decisions. Uh, if people didn't listen to that one, y'all can go stream that shit. That's like the most recent of my music. But um, just to see what the reaction was and see how people really respond to it, and it's cool. But I'm looking for a bigger reaction and I'm looking for more something that sticks. So I could like make a bunch of mixtapes and keep, you know, punching air or I could like land a significant, you know, you know what I'm saying? Strike. So that's what I'm doing with Cushion Orange Juice 2. That's the yeah. experiment that I'm running and I'm gonna see how that works. And then that'll, you know, dictate whether more mixtapes or whether I just, you know, take my time and just drop those. For the sake, you gonna bring ears that might yeah. not have listened to decisions, yep. but they like, what, what's that? Mm -hmm. But Cush and OJ too, they gonna be like, right, let me just, even if they just listening to see if you still got it, like you had it. That's, the whole, that's what they gonna do. That's the thought process behind it. I, I, somebody who I really care about, I was <laughs> telling them, I could come with any name in the world and people might or might not listen uh. to it. Like you said, they have the option to, but Cush and Orange Juice too is like, nigga, we're, Student. Like, yeah. what the fuck? What I, I at least got to listen to some song, like, right. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm looking for. Like, that's what this business is. It's not, you know, what the most creative thing is. It's not necessarily even where you're at in your life. It's what people are going to engage with the most and what's going to get them to, you know, tap into what I'm doing. And even with the music that I'm dropping, um, it's just really good for me right now. It's not even to say anything that uh oh I've, I've been here and i'm back or blah, blah blah or anything like that it's just where i'm at right now so when you tap in and when you listen to it you're gonna understand like you can go back and listen to the first one you can listen to the shit in between but for me i'm starting right here back yeah, yeah. Top. Yep. Oh, I'm a brand ambassador for this uh, closing line called oh, cool. Faith. Hell yeah, I like that. That's hard, nigga. Yeah. I wear that to my son's basketball game. Yeah. Nigga, that's what I'm talking about, father. You look yeah. like Deion Sanders in that motherfucker, mind, nigga. Father. I done asked you for that motherfucker for the longest. You know what I mean? You know that's the one. But you don't wear large. This is my Deion Sanders fit. I know, get the fit. one I wear. And I got oh, some really? new balance to go with this <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I'll put a Good. white tee on. Good 990. Take a whip. Hell yeah. For sure, man. This is hard. Appreciate that, my boy. Yes, yeah, man. very tactical, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Talk. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm. We over here building some shit, man. Making like it happen this. one this step nice. at a time, man. Appreciate it. Y'all yeah. hear that? It's really Tune nice. In. Listen. It's really nice. Appreciate it. <laughs> Fuck along with y'all. Wiz make you feel good as a mother. Thank you. So nice. Cat, what else you want to ask me, <laughs> nigga? Your leg shaking. <laughs> Reese, what else? Nigga, I thought you had a what? oxygen okay. tank on. <laughs> I got a quick song, never It's your professional voice? God damn, nigga. What the fuck? Sound like that? You heard of it? With a song. With so, uh, This nigga sound like a, a stenographer, <laughs> man. With. All right. With. All right. Sound like a family guy character. Hey, Wiz, you got it. Sound like a family guy character. Hey, Wiz, you got it. Um. Oh, it was, Peter, what was the butt? Like, uh, uh. It was, it was crazy because I had just come home off of the road. So um, all of the shit that I was rapping about in the song was like shit that was happening like while I was on the road. But um, I remember like my cousin sitting in the, uh, he was like outside of the booth and shit. And I was, I was coming up with the hook. And I like actually got a little bit stuck like on the hook and like what I wanted to say and shit like that. And I stepped outside of the booth and I was just listening to it over and over. And then I said one bar and he was like, nigga, that's it right there. And then that's how I came up with the say she never been part. And um, yeah, like I wasn't even really sold on it, like super confident about it. But my cousin, like he let me know, like, and he was one of my first partners that I like started smoking with. So he was like, nigga, that's that shit. So as soon as he told me, I was like, all right, cool, bam. And then I was able to move forward with it. Yeah, yeah. good look, yeah. Sledgering. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Cause I'm about to get on the jet so y'all can. I wish y'all was smoking while we smoke. I'm about to land to another one. I have to pick up everything you drop. As soon as, I, as soon as I get in my car, it's gonna be another one of these waiting. Oh, that's that's a great, that's a great yeah. feeling. Well, look, we know this your first time stopping through here. Sir. Don't let it be your last time. Yeah, it's the Five South Show. Where's Khalif? 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 Where's